Shannon Savoy is the CEO of Narc Free Living LLC. She is an Army veteran of 23 years and now serves in the Army of the Lord. She is a trauma-informed narcissist abuse recovery coach, as well as a powerful, dynamic, Holy Spirit-led speaker. Shannon is a survivor of domestic violence and an advocate against abuse. She empowers others to break the chains of abuse through empowerment, edification, and education. Narc Free Living helps clients achieve their healing goals by introducing healthy coping skills, biblical, and practical strategies. Follow at Narc Free Living LLC on YouTube and all social media outlets for in-depth teachings. Let's break the chains of abuse. Visit www.narcfreeliving.com for more information. www.narcfreeliving.com Hey, y'all. Hey, fam. Hello, chain breakers. It's been a long time since I left you without a dope beat to step to. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? Can y'all, is this thing on? I'm a little rusty. It's been a few weeks. It's been about three weeks. It's been about, you know, 12 years, 45 days. It feels like a long time since I've seen y'all. Thank you, Irene. God bless you. It feels like I've been, it's, it's feel like it's been a minute, right? I'm a little rusty, but the Holy Spirit isn't. He's never rusty. He's never rusty. Hello, Irene. Thank you. God bless you. And may God return that seed to you over and above measure. Right, Brother Phil? It's been a minute. Greetings to you in Australia. I think it is. Carol, hello. Hello, L. Max, Scarlett. My husband, faith-based workplaces in the building. Hello. All right, man. He always said I have different voices. Look, I have look, y'all be cutting up. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna tell my business. I ain't gonna tell my business. You know, if you in CBU, you might know. We cut up a little bit. We cut a rug. Hello, Charlene. Hello. Let's see. Hello, hello. It's good to see you. Hey, Arne. Shabbat Shalom. Yes, get your communion cups if you want to do communion later. All right, you know, this is a big biblical channel. We do church here. We are the ecclesia. Hello. We don't do church. We are the church. We are the ecclesia. Hello, Patrice. Hello, lyricist. Hey, Joy. Hey, girl. Hey. Hello, India. It's good to see you. Irene is in the building. Life feels so good today. Yes. Okay. I don't know who that is, but God bless her. Hello, Jasmine. Happy New Year. Yes, it's 2023. Yes, it is. Now, we know we biblically, we, we've been in the new year. We've been in there. But for the world, according to the Gregorian holiday, it is 2023. Yes, it is. Hello, Vanessa. Hello, all me. It's good to see you. All right. <laughs> I miss you, too. I miss y'all. I miss y'all. I needed that little break, right? Hello, Dominique. Thank you so much. You know, we got to change it up every now and again. You know, keep the religious people upset. That ain't why I do it, but they be mad, Dominic. Girl, they be mad. They be mad when we switch the hair up. Mm, the devil is a lie. Hello, 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 uh, Matrix. It's good to see you. L Mac, Daddy Soldier. All right. Uh, Carol, amen. Amen. That's amazing. Praise God. We, you know, we love the praise reports here and on faith-based workplace. We celebrate you. That's some tambourine time. Okay. That's some tambourine time. All right. For those of you who like to get right into the message, give me, give me, give you a good sis. Five good minutes. All right. So we can greet people. That's how we do. You know, that's how we do. We celebrate. So that's amazing. Let me see. I have, I, I did three miles this morning, Carol. I'm about 7,300 steps. I've been getting my step, getting back to me. I, I, I used to be a workout queen. Okay. All right. And I had to, I, you know, I fell off. You know, sometimes you fall off and then I, I'm getting it back. I'm getting it back together. You best believe if, if I fall off, I don't fall off long. Do you hear me? You count me out the count again. Cause it won't be that way forever. I can tell you that. All right. Hey, uh, queen Shani. Hello, love the beach. Yes, hello, sis. Good to see you. Hello, Eve. I'm glad you are here too. 
we are one body in christ i love that name so hello la is in the house the la i can't do the la oh there we go la is in the house eric yes trisha is good to see you patrice all right lolly it's good to see you all right y'all hello if i missed y'all hello 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 shabbat shalom all right we'll do communion later so as we examine this message um you know as you, we go through this message just examine your heart if you want to take communion with us all right you know a lot of times we grew up in the church and we take it we are the church we can do communion at home we don't have to wait on anybody you just ask god to examine your heart all right so let's go ahead and get into this all right we're talking about the sexuality of the narcissist so share this message out subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the channel all right we're talking about the narcissist agenda the b system's goal is what the b system's goal is for the marriage and the family unit we're going to talk about you know so, this this is not your church mother's conversation all right this is not sister sardine's conversation so if if um you know if if you are easily triggered if you do not, um, if you are not a partaker of adult conversations in order to heal, this might not be the conversation for you, but we we are here to set captives free, okay? And the more we talk about these things, don't you know people get healed from these things, all right? We're going to talk about how Satan entraps and, and snares, all right, and entices. We're going to talk about the spirit of Bathamith. I want y'all, we talked about the spirit of, uh, spirit of Bathamith and Belial. All right, we're going to talk about what that spirit comes to do. We talked about uh, uh, before I, uh, um, last time, we talked about spirit of Bathamith. All right, we're going to go deeper into the spirit of Bilal this time. All right, because I want you to know when you see these things, when you see the world's agenda, God wants you to be equipped. We're going to talk about the sexual pro profile of the narcissist. Okay, so that's what we're going to be talking about here on today so welcome y'all welcome vips thank y'all for being a member of the channel all right uh don't forget to follow my husband he has his knuck if you buck t-shirts we knuck and buck in the spirit all right we don't fight with hands some of y'all used to fight with ho with holy hands now we fight in the spirit we look god says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through the pulling down of the of strongholds all right that's what we do here all right so uh welcome here don't forget to subscribe to my husband's channel he'll be live on wednesday thank you for those of us uh those of you who follow both of our channels we appreciate you we are a kingdom uh uh what we like to call a kingdom couple all right and that simply means we are both believing we come together to tear down because what was what that you know my scripture i can't remember when i need to remember one can put what a thousand to fight two can put ten thousand y'all know y'all somebody will put it in the comments all right so when, when god brings us together we can we can tear down the gates of hell all right when god brings us together we can do more as a body because the hand can't say to the foot i don't need you we need one another all right so that's why god brings i'm getting ahead of my notes that's why god brings us together to tear these things down it's not just so we can have a partner yes god says it's not good for man to be alone and when god sends you a good thing brothers when god sends you a good thing it will change your life do you understand understand me all right because women we birth nations when god sends you your good thing when god sends you your help me you will tear down the gates of hell together do you understand me as we advance the kingdom so that's me and my husband's goal do you understand me we advance the kingdom and all in our little sector together all right so and we are here to intercede and, and pray for marriages and pray for more kingdom uh ministries and couples to be birthed as we advance the kingdom of of y'all together hallelujah all right um and a few admin notes don't forget you can join the mentorship thank you for those of you who have joined we're gonna be locked and loaded come thursday okay uh the mentorship program if you joined uh cbu or you didn't get a chance to join chain breaker university the fall and summer this time is for you all right so if you've already enrolled you you got your your handbook open your letter it may have gone to spam all right so open your newsletter all right if you want mentorship we're gonna be talking about it all it's not just for people who have been in narcissistic relationships it's overcoming trauma it is dealing with narcissistic families it is dealing with uh uh you know narcissists in the workplace it is it is equipping the saints it is discipleship it is sisterhood it is no other i can tell you it is no other program like this and you'll see the ladies that have gone through the program google it all right the reviews are on google so if, you, if god has placed that on your heart all right join 
join, okay? All right, exhortations are free because freely the, the, the anointing has been given to me. So that's why we do this here free three, two, three and four hours. But the coaching program, all right, that's separate. All right, that's the business side. This is the ministry side where it's free. All right, but the mentorship, go ahead. If you want to uh, sign up, go ahead and go to the website. It is worth this weight in gold. All right, I can tell you it's, no, it's nothing like it. Do you understand me? Check the website, Arne, check the website. All right. Uh, Solomon will put it in there, but it, it will bless you. It's for your business, for your ministry. We got we got we have mental health professionals. We have nurses. We have we have all kind uh, of all kind of women in there. All right. So get in where you fit in. I can tell you it ain't nothing like it. All right. All right. Um, and then uh, let's see. I think that's it. All right. So my disclaimer, we don't work in all absolutes here. I don't diagnose, but we do discern. Do you understand me? So when you hear this message, it may not apply to your narcissist or the narcissist that was in your life. But a lot of us read the room. A lot of us have gone through different things behind these narcissists. So if you are easily offended or easily triggered, all right, um, it, it's not my job to manage your triggers and your demons. Do you understand that? It's, that's not my job. My job is to preach and teach the gospel. My job is to equip the saints. All right. So if you get upset, I can promise you it won't make a bit of difference. All right. But the word of God will go forth. OK, because I'm here to please y'all, not please you. All right. Now, if you get pleased in the, and, and convicted and rebuked and, and set free in the, in, the, in the interim, that is that is that is what we're here for. All right. All right. But uh, if you identify as a uh, homosexual or an adulterer or a fornicator, this message may convict you. Now, no, I still love you, but I got to tell the truth about this thing. All right. Because the truth is what sets us free. We get free from word of knowledge. So we're going to be talking about some things here today. So let's go ahead and go to prayer and then we'll get right on into this message. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you, Lord, Lord, uh, with this message, with this exhortation, Lord, with this edification, Heavenly Father, to empower and to set captives free, Heavenly Father, for those who have an ear to ear, Lord, reduce all of me, Lord, so that they can see your spirit that resides in me, Heavenly Father. I bind up any spirit of error, any spirit of false doctrine, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Let the gospel be teached and preached, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. We come to you just thanking you for this Shabbat, Heavenly Father, thanking you for your shalom and your peace, Heavenly Father, thanking you that this is a season of, of restoration, of retribution, Heavenly Father, of vindication, Lord. This is a season of extreme obedience, Lord, where you are taking us from glory to glory to one step to another, Heavenly Father, so that we can recover, Lord, so that we won't be down on the battlefield forever. Some of them are in ICU, Heavenly Father. Lord, teach them, uh, teach them your ways, Heavenly Father. Lord, let us put a way this world because what profits the world to what profits a man to gain the whole world and lose your soul hallelujah so god is come christ has come yeshua has come to set the captives free on today hallelujah so lord we understand that this is a season of extreme obedience lord teach us to hear your word from the yo your voice from the enemy's voice is this god's voice or is this the enemy's voice teach us to hearken unto your word heavenly father because your word says my people know my voice voice my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not answer let us not answer the voice of the wolf heavenly father but let us follow you as sheep heavenly father in the name of jesus so in this season of obedience lord we for those in agreement lord we put our will aside lord for your will we put our way aside for your way heavenly father lord we ask that you break every chain every soul tie every demonic agreement for those who are in agreement lord we turn away from sin lord because you are Jehovah Sikhanum, you are Jehovah Mekadishim, and you have come to consecrate us, Lord. You have come to clean us up from all up from this flesh, Lord. We crucify this flesh, Lord. We don't walk by the flesh in carnality. We walk by the spirit. We walk by faith and not sight because this is going to take extreme faith to walk in this walk, Lord, to walk the narrow path, Lord. So empower your people, Lord. Lord, we bind up every monitoring spirit, every cyber stalking spirit, every targeted individual. Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with them, Lord, that, that the enemy, that the enemy does not win, Lord. We blind those monitoring spirits in the, in the realm of the spirit, Lord. Crush their ears, Lord. Seal their eyes, Lord. Shut their mouths, Lord. 
from every smear campaign, Heavenly Father, the smear campaign won't work. Uh, hallelujah. It will clear the air of people who are not with you anyway. If all it takes is one bad word and the people turn against you, they were never with you in the beginning. So the smear campaign is going to clear your atmosphere and it's needed. It's needed because some of you got too many fake and phony people around you and God wants you to be rooted on solid ground. He wants you to be able to discern a wolf from a sheep. He wants you to be able to discern a snake from a frenemy. Hallelujah. He wants you to be able to distinguish a foe from a true friend. He wants you to be able to discern his word from the enemy's word. He wants you to be able to walk the talk and talk the walk the walk and talk the talk. He doesn't want you to look like the church. He wants you to be the church. He's saying for some of you, the building is on fire and it's time to get out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The building on his own fire and Babylon is about to fall and God is trying to deliver you just like he did Abraham and Sodom and Gomorrah. He's trying to pull you out before judgment comes. Hallelujah. It's not a punishment. No, it doesn't feel good, but it's going to be good for you in the end. Let God come do his perfect work because his perfect work will produce perseverance. Hallelujah. The trials and tribulations will produce perseverance in you. It will produce endurance in you and you'll be able to run this race until the end. Hallelujah. So we bind up every soul tie, every generational curse in the name of Jesus for those who are in agreement, Lord. We're ready to do a new thing, Lord. We're gonna not we're not gonna take old ways into a new season. Hallelujah. So cleanse us, Jehovah Nick uh, uh Sikanu. Cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Consecrate our bodies, Lord. Consecrate our minds, Lord. Bring back the fragmented pieces of our soul that have been with every uh Tom, uh, Dick and Harry, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, with every Sheila and Ashley, Heavenly Father, bring back the, the fragmented pieces of our soul. Bring back the, we call back the fragmented pieces of our mind. We bring back the fragmented pieces of our soul, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we ask that the potter put us back together again. The potter is putting you back together again, chain breaker. The potter is putting you back together again. You'll never be the same. My God, you'll never be the same. You'll never be the same. The old me died in 2016 and some of you have been reborn. You're being renewed. You're being rejuvenated. You're being uh, reborn. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. So we just thank you, Lord, for the pruning and the crushing process, Lord. Bring us into maturation because some of us are still on milk, Lord, and you're trying to bring us on up. You're trying to grow us on up. You're trying to heal our inner child, Lord, so that we can get on the battlefield and fight this good fight of faith, Heavenly Father. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you in advance for your deutimous power. Hallelujah. We thank you in advance for your atomic power. Lord, meet us here on today. Lord, we tear down every evil altar. I come like a Josiah and tear down every evil altar of sin in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, if we build an altar of sacrifice, an altar of praise, an altar of worship to you, the most high Yahweh. And we just thank you, Lord. We come in great expectation of what you're going to do here on today, of the word that is going to go forth, the chains that are going to be broken, the lives that are going to be changed, and the captives that are going to be set free here on today. Hallelujah. Have your way. In the mighty name of Yeshua, it is so. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Glory be to God on high. We ain't come to play in 2023. We ain't come to play with these devils in 2023. See, in 2022... We're going to keep it going. Hallelujah. See, the 2022 you would have got knocked down and stayed down. The 2022 you would have died and then wanted to commit suicide. The 2022 you, when the narcissist smear campaign came, it would have knocked the wind out of you, but not this 2023 you. Hallelujah. When they say new year, new me. No, baby, we mean that in the spirit. We ain't playing games this year. We ain't playing games this year. 
year. No, we ain't playing games with you, devil. See, in 2023, 2022, when the enemy tried to take your kids, no, see, you didn't know what to do, but now God is giving you digital download. He's giving you a divine strategy. The old ways won't open up new doors, so you got to seek a new strategy. Your children will return home to you. Glory be to God. Your name will be vindicated. You will be restored. See, some of you had to downsize in 2022. You thought it was a punishment to go to a tiny house. You thought it was a punishment to go downsize. Some of you have been homeless, but God is taking you to a new city. Season, and he's gonna give you double for your trouble. You better know who your God is in this new season. This is not for play. We didn't come to play games. We not playing games. Do you hear me? Playtime is over, devil. I'm up. I'm up. I'm up. These chain breakers are up. Glory be to God. They're up. They're up, they're up. What you did in 2022 won't work. It won't work. It won't work. It won't work. God bless you, our name. God bless you. Glory be to God. Oh, thank you, our name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. And Samuel said, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to listen than the fat of the the rams. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. May God bless you and return every seed back to you. May though that money be used for the, for the sponsorships of two women. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. God is a way maker. Yes, he is. He's a burden bearer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is a way maker. Hallelujah. He'll make a way in the, in the middle of a way. He is a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 I ain't even got into the message. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We ain't playing games. We ain't playing games. Hallelujah. So this is a season of restoration, of retribution, of restructuring. Just like the rerouting. Some of you are getting rerouted like your ways. I use ways for uh, to, to navigate. But how many of you trust ways? How many of you trust Google Maps more than you trust God? Hallelujah. No more. You're being rerouted. You're being restructured. And it's going to take righteousness. It's going to take obedience to get to your breakthrough. See, gone are the days in the prophet saying, Oh, yeah, good tidings, good tidings. No, you got to obey God in order to get to your breakthrough. You got to obey God in order to get to your next destination because you don't want to keep hearing rerouted, rerouted, rerouted. This is a season of transformation, of transparency. This is a season of the changing of the guard. Oh, you're going to see some people in this next year that you thought were with God and come to find out they've been with the world. They look like the world. They in bed with Babylon. They're in Freemasonry. They're in secret societies and Greek life and Greek culture. Why would you want to be Greek when you can follow Yeshua? Hallelujah. You can't mix oil and water. You can't mix light and darkness. You can't mix new age with, with Christianity. You can't mix new age and follow God at the same time. You're going to have to give one of your gods up. Do you hear me? We ain't come to play with you on today. This is a season where the wealth of the wicked is being transferred to the righteous what you was here to talk about narcissism no baby no this is a biblical channel but we are here to help the wounded warrior become a well soldier hallelujah 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 let me get into this message holy spirit help me be my help on today glory be to god the acts of the flesh are obvious Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, discord, and fit. I need my blotting paper on name. It ain't it's supposed to be here tomorrow. Discords, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, and factions. All right, that's the acts of the flesh. So when we when we've been talking about the, the sexuality of the narcissist, keep these things in mind. And a, a comment from uh Marsha the Hooligan 9967. I love when she said this. She said a true narcissist, excuse me, is an equal opportunity screw up. She ain't lying. Marsha, uh, Marsha ain't lying. 
a true narcissist. I cover your ears if, if you're sensitive. This ain't Sister Sardine's conversation. We got to be real because the saints, the, the 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 saints are too busy playing and not getting set free. So we got to break this thing down where people can understand it. Do you understand? It's an equal opportunity. Yes, it is. So in other words, uh, she said, man, woman, animal, or child. It doesn't matter. Matter the end justifies the mean. So yes, that means in the name of Jesus, we speak stability to the airways. I speak stability to the internet in this house in the name of Jesus. All right. So yes, that means children. Yes, that means animals. Yes, that means women. Yes, that means men. Yes, that means dead people. For some, not all, I don't speak in absolutes, okay? So you apply the word where it needs to be applied. If it doesn't apply, you let it fly, all right? For some of them, that means dead people, all right? Yes, that means there are no limits. When you get in perversion, there are no limits to how far a person will go. Do you understand me? There are some things, there are some, some narcissists, and we know this thing works on a spectrum. Some of them are into some of the most disgusting things, and some of you have gotten into some disgusting things following behind a narcissist. So yes, narcissists are opportunistic. Yes, narcissists works on a spectrum. Narcissism works on a spectrum. Some are more sadistic. Some are more Machiavellian. Some are higher on the spectrum. Some are sociopathic. Some are psychopathic. All right. The goal is not to diagnose them. It is to discern the spirits that are in operation. Some are somatic. Some are cerebral. Sex is a weapon for a narcissist. Do you understand me? Some withhold affection. Yes, hit that like button while you're in here. All right. Some withhold affection. Cerebrals will withhold affection. All right. They'll play my, all of them play mind games, but a cerebral narcissist will try their best to withhold. All right. Because you want it. They'll play games like that. All right. They'll use mind games, mental telepathy. All right. Everything they can. All right. To turn you out in a different way. Now, so Somatic narcissists works, they work really with the flesh. All of them work because all of them work in the flesh. But a somatic narcissist, that's what I was married to. Yes, ain't nothing like a somatic narcissist. Them things are the dustiest of the dusty, the crustiest of the crusty, and the nastiest of the nasty. Do you understand me? So sex is a weapon for narcissists. Yes, it is. All right. And a lot of people think that they're narcissists that their narcissist or their spouse or their partner, it could be your mother or your father, is a sex addict. A lot of narcissists will get diagnosed. Thank you, Rosie, for becoming a member, sis. God bless you. Thank you for being here. All right. A lot of people will, will be in a relationship or a marriage with a narcissist and the narcissist will come out and say, I'm a sex addict after they catch them cheating for the 2011 time, for the 5011 time, they'll catch them cheating and they'll think that the narcissist is a sex addict and we need to get you help because you're a sex addict. No, they have demons. They are demonized and they are bound and they are under a strong man's spirit and a host of others. This is deeper than a sex addiction. This is more than a mistake. A mistake you make once, you make twice, maybe. A mistake is not a lifestyle of cheating and putting your penis where it doesn't belong. A mistake is not opening your legs and your vagina to anybody. Do you understand me? That's not a mistake. That's something going on, and you got to get to the root of that. Thank you, uh, Robbie Bacon. Glory to God. God bless you. God bless you. May God bless you and Rosie and return those seeds back to you over and above measure. Thank you so much. All right. So a lot of people will think their narcissist or their spouse is a sex addict. No, it runs deeper than that. It runs deeper than a sex addiction. All right. So you are not an animal. You don't have to have sex. Do you understand me? I know this world wants you to believe that you're that that, you know, women are Jezebels. All women are Jezebels. And, and you got to, you know, they, they flaunt Cardi and Meg and Nikki and all these half dressed women in front of you. And you think that that's how it is. You got to do like that to get a man. 
You got to do like, no, no, holy is holy. Holiness is still good. Holiness is still in season. Do you understand me? In and out of season. Yes, it is. Holiness is still righteous. Yes, it is. I don't care what this world says and, and what uh, uh, so-called celebrity and social media influencer they try to prop up in front of you. Holiness is still righteousness. Do you understand me? And for the men, they'll pop P. Diddy and all these other phony fake celebrities all right in front of your face and make you think that they have everything no they're tormented anybody that is controlled by sex and their flesh is a tormented soul make no mistake about it so if the narcissist if the opportunity presents itself they will sleep with either either sex for supply make no mistake about it now it may not be the narcissist in your life it may not be your mama it may not be your daddy all right but read the room have you seen my post where i talk about that a narcissistic man in particular and we're gonna talk about the women too oh don't think women getting off don't think the female narcissist is getting off in this story oh no in this exhortation no it's enough it's enough uh accountability to go around but but for for a man all right and i'm and i said this i think i said this in one of my videos um i don't want to tell too much but uh when i was when i was married right he would brag about about men coming on to him now i don't know about you but most heterosexual men are not impressed by a homosexual men coming on to them. Do you understand me? Not a heterosexual, not a truly heterosexual man, not a man of God. No, 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 no. I mean, I'm, I'm just here to tell the truth. They're, they're not gonna, they're not gonna be, um, matter of fact, a lot of them will be appalled because they like, what in me made somebody that was like that think that they could talk to me. And the same thing for a woman. Now, some women will get, they, they like, they don't care. They just want attention. So if a, if, a, if you're heterosexual and a, and a gay woman tries to talk to you, you you think that, oh, I got it. I got it like this. All right. And this is not to bash you. If you are like that, stick around. This is not that message. This, I'm not here to come dim you, but we got to get some things straight. All right. So all I'm saying is you got to check. You got to check this thing. All right. Because narcissists are try, they are hobo try and buy whatever it takes to get supplied. Men or women, some of them are gay for pay. Do you understand me? All right. They'll drop hints. That's what he was doing. He was dropping hints to let me know what was going down. Do you understand me? All right. They'll drop hints. So be careful. Be careful and listen to what they say. All right. Some of them, the best friend, a woman, you think that that's her best friend. You don't know that they didn't slept together. You don't know what they didn't did. You didn't, you don't know what agreements they didn't came into behind closed door. And it's easier for a woman. All right. It's, and I've seen women that were, were married, but they were sleeping with their best friend who was a woman. Do you understand me? Oh, no. Oh, it's just me. I'm, I'm by myself out here. Oh, I'm just the only one that said that. I'm just the only one that's seen that. So they'll say a friend or someone else, but they're really projecting. Watch what they say. People will tell you who they are. All right. Uh, they, it, when a narcissist tells you something, it is a confession of what they did or are doing to someone else. That's right, Aaron. Holiness is still right. Do you understand me? Hallelujah. That's why God can help. God can help. So if you like that, don't stick around. I'm not here to condemn. All right. So we got to understand what the narcissist agenda is. All right. It is to bring you out of alignment with y'all's will for your life. See, say no. Oh, oh let, let me, let me, uh, some of you. Okay. This might be new for some of you. All right. This is, this is bigger than Nino Brown. This is bigger than you and me. Satan wants a transgender society. Do you not understand that? He wants a transgender, a genderless society. This is bigger than me and you and our desires. This is opposing Yahweh's will. Do you understand me? Satan, it, Satan wants to act and do things that are contrary to what God says they should be. That's Satan's whole thing. Do you understand me? This is a war between two kingdoms. See, people get caught up in their desires and their emotions and their feeling. And everything is about I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel. 
Oh, no, you can't, especially uh, so-called empaths, all right? You are not your feelings. You are not supposed to be coming into agreement with your feelings. Do you understand me? Don't you know that your feelings can lead you to hell? That's for somebody. Keep, keep trying to be one with your feelings. It'll lead you right to hell, and you'll make a pact uh, with the devil, and you don't want that. Do you understand me? So Satan loves when we get caught up in our feelings. So when you are somebody who walks in their feelings and everything's about, oh, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel my feelings, but my feelings don't control me. If you want to be a woman, a wise woman, do you understand me, queens? You cannot be ruled and reigned by your feelings. Talking about you're an empath. You're not an empath. You're an empathic person whose feelings, all right, who, whose feelings and emotions, you're not supposed to be reigned by your feelings and your emotions. And especially for kings, a man that's ruled by his feelings. You feel your feelings, but you don't become one with your feelings. Your feelings will lead you right into Delilah's bed. Your flesh and your feelings will lead you right to Jezebel. And that bed is, is filled with, with, with witchcraft, all right, and sexual immorality and adultery and fornication is filled, all right? You'll sleep in that bed and it'll, it will be paved, all right? You will walk the, the slow walk to hell. Do you understand me? So Satan loves when you can be controlled and ruled and reigned by your feelings. No, you better be centered. I'm centered. I'm not ruled and reigned by my emotions. That's why some of you are bat-ish crazy right now because you hear voices and you got to be able to clear. The God. You got to go through deliverance and get those voices out of your head because you got all the soul ties of every man, of every woman that you uh, uh, slept with swirling around in your head because you came into a covenant agreement with a demonic demon carrier. All right. So Satan's goal, Satan knows that he's going to hell. Satan is going to hell where gasoline draws on. Do you understand me? And his goal is to take as many people with him as possible. Isn't that so selfish? He going to hell. Isn't that what he did with the, with the uh, angels? One third of the angels. What does, I often wonder, what does Satan say to them? to make them turn against Yahweh. But what did the narcissist or somebody do in your life to make you turn against God? Some of you are against God. You're mad at God right now for what somebody else did to you. That's the voice of Satan. You mad at the church. All right, you mad at everybody. Not saying that what they did was right because if they hurt you, it's not right. But God has to deal with them, not you. Do you understand me? But I wonder, and it's just like the smear campaign. I wanted this about my family, like my relatives, and not my family, my relatives. I wonder what did what did my mother say to them to make them think the things that they thought about me? Do you ever sit back and just think what I said? That must have been a good old a good old juicy lie. Have you ever wondered that? Like, what did somebody? What did they say? You know, I, I got to get out that business because that ain't my business what somebody else think about me. You understand? It ain't my business what you think about me because what you think about me don't make me poop. All right. All right. But, I, you know, sometimes you just wonder, what did Satan say to make the angels oppose the great I am? That had to be a good old juicy, like he did Eve. But that's what he does. He just plants a little seed. He's very conniving and convincing. See, Satan hates everyone, but will use anyone. He hates that we have a chance for salvation. He hates that. That's right, brother. It's spiritual war. Yes, he is. He's transgender. He's transgender. Satan is transgender. So if you ever wonder, if you ever wonder why his children talk about pride, because they are in agreement with pride. Leviathan is king of the children of pride. 
Do you understand me? So you have to be careful what movement you get behind, mothers. You have to be careful what movement you get behind, fathers. You have to be careful what movement you get behind and what you're coming into agreement with, even with your child, even with your loved ones. I love you, but I ain't joining no, no alphabet community for you. I love you, but I, I love you. Do you understand me? Because we live in a society that thinks they have to have an organization in order to be powerful. I'm powerful all by myself when I have the power, the Ruach Hokadesh inside of me. I don't need no organization. I don't need BLM to support black lives. I don't need no LGBTQ, all right, to support people. All right, sir. I don't need none of that. Do you understand me? But when you're weak, you think you need an organization. I don't need no, no sisterhood, no AKA, no Skiwi, no Delta, no Sigma, no uh, Sigma Gamma Rho. I don't need none of that to do charity and community service and sisterhood. No, the sisterhood and brotherhood in Christ is good enough for me because Christ, when, if Christ would here, was here, would he be an Omega? If he was here, would he condone you being an AKA? Oh, I'm stepping on your toes. Get mad at me. Write the email. I ain't going to listen to it. I ain't going to listen to it. Leave me a voicemail. I ain't going to listen to it. I can tell you, leave me a comment. I ain't going to read it. I'm, I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you. When you worship in them false gods, you're going to have to answer for that in heaven. Do you understand me? All right. Do you understand me? Thank you, Alexander. God bless you. May God return that to you over and above measure. All right. So Satan hates that we have a chance. He hates that we have a chance for salvation. He hates that because he messed his chance up by, by pride, by egoism, all right, by wanting to be like Yahweh. He wanted to be worshipped. No, we don't steal God's glory. All glory goes to the most high. And he hates that his works were destroyed on the cross. When Yeshua came and made an open spectacle of them, he made an open show of them and Satan hates you and he hates me. Do you understand me? So having and having spoiled principalities and powers, that's Colossians 2 and 15. He made a show of them openly triumphing over them. How can they tell me who I am? I'm made in his image. How? How? So you got to understand the a narcissist is part of, sat of Satan's satanic army. I don't care who they are. And we were too, truth be told. Do we want to tell this truth? Because some of us think we're so good. I'm an empath and I'm so good. I'm so good. I'm, I'm so, you ain't good. You ain't as good as you think you are. I'm not as good as I think I am. Not without this flesh is dirty, filthy, nothingness. Do you understand me? It's only because of the blood of Jesus that we're something. But when you start to think, oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. My heart, you ain't good. You ain't as good as you think you are. Only the blood of Jesus makes us good. Only the blood of Jesus makes us righteousness, not our works. Uh, our, work, uh, our works ain't nothing without the Holy Spirit. Do you understand me? So this is bigger than me and you and your desires. That's right. Than me and your desires. You got to crucify that flesh. This is opposing. If you walk in the spirit of homosexuality, of fornication, of adultery, and you're talking about somebody that had to overcome some of those things. I ain't sitting up here like I ain't never been through nothing. You don't know my whole story. Do you understand me? I've wrestled and tussled with some things. And I live to tell the tale. And I've delivered people through the power of the Holy Spirit. I've seen the spirit spouses and the demons come out of them because they had a soul tied with the narcissist, with the Jezebel. This ain't a game. Do you understand me? But this is a war between two kingdoms. Thank you, Joy. God bless you, sis. All right, so this is a war between two opposing kingdoms. See, people get caught up in their emotions and I feel, 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 and I feel. 
No, no. This is about two opposing kingdoms. All right. And the beast system. Let's talk about the beast system. The beast system, this matrix system. See, when you wake up from narcissist abuse, if you like me, I was like, like I was in a cave. I was, in, I had to think about this. I was in spiritual ICU for about three and a half years, something like that. Three years, 2016, I was born again uh, at the end of 2016. Then 2017, 2016 was the worst year of my life. Do you understand me? That's when everything came to a head. That's when I realized I was married to a, a somatic so, um, sociopath who was trying to kill me. Do you understand me? 2016 was the year that it all got shaken up for me. That everything that I thought I knew, it was a lie. I married somebody who was trying to destroy me. It was a lie. And it messes with your head. You got to sort through the cognitive dissonance. How did I allow myself to be so tied to this demon carrier? And I had to examine me. And that's the tough part because we want to point the finger, narcissist, 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 narcissist. And then them fingers, you point one finger back, you got about three more pointing back at you. And they was all pointing back at me. Do you understand me? But then when I realized what had happened, what, what have I done? What have I done? What have I done? What have, what generational curses? How did I re-up this contract? What have I done, Lord? And then I awakened and I saw that everything that we were taught in school was a lie. Lies on top of lies. My country, tis of thee, this country was built on Freemasonry. Everything that we're taught from the time we are born in this beast world system is a fabricated, well-crafted lie, house of cards. See, when you live a lie, you live every living la vida loca. Everything is pretty and gun. You know, it's it's like candy land, cause you're in narc land. And then when you wake up, that thing shatters your world, and you realize. And I realized my family in 2020. I realized I was born into a Jezebelic family. The people that I love didn't love me back. To realize your family is using you, that stings. To realize that my family tried to throw me in a pen like Joseph, that stings. That stings. To realize your own mother doesn't have the capacity to love you, that stings. So I'm still healing. I'm still healing. But I had to realize this was bigger than me. This was bigger than me. This is bigger than you. Then I start to examine things that I had came into agreement with. I started to examine why we do the things that we do. And God started to show me things about the four wall church, the difference between the four wall church and the ecclesia. He started to show me things. And I had to learn by the school of the Holy Spirit because I had learned by this beast system, by this matrix, by Babylonian uh, teachers and preachers, false prophets and Holy Spirit had to walk me through this thing. I ain't go to nobody's theology school. Do you understand me? I had to learn by the school of the hard knocks, by the school of the Holy Spirit. And I can tell you, Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh is the best teacher. Do you understand me? And then God had to show me, this is, the, this is Satan's goal is to break down marriages. He hates marriage. He loves when people, how people are today. He loves it. How men are against women. Women are against men. People always say, well, that's why I don't get married. And, that's why, and some of you haven't been called to singleness. Everybody hasn't been called to marriage and everything hasn't been called to singleness. But a lot of people, you can see the, uh, the ops. The ops are on their job. 
They're breaking down. Thank you, Patrice. God bless you. You can see how they're breaking the family unit down so that men oppose women and women oppose men because Satan hates women with a passion. We birth nations in our womb. That's why he went to Eve, because she, as the weaker vessel, was able to be broken down. Do you understand me? So he went to, to the woman first to break her down first. And if you can get to the woman, if, if certainly if you can get to the man, because once the, the strong man is bound, the house, so he removed the fathers. He, he made, he put them, he, he uh, uh, you know, Jezebel works with Balaam. So he he uh, took the the power of the man away. He Ahabs the men. Not all of you brothers. Some of you brothers are 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 are, are men of valor. All right. And then some of you have been Ahab by Jezebel. Do you understand me? Thank you, Alexander. God bless you. All right. Some of you have been uh, uh, Ahabed by Jezebel. And your voice is lost. I just put a post up this morning about how you lose your voice when you've been ensnared by Jezebel. That's what happened to Elijah. He got ensnared by Jezebel after slaying the, the prophets. As a true prophet, he got ran in a cave behind a Jezebelic curse, behind a witchcraft arrow. And that's what happened to our men. They've been silenced. You see, king, king, everything is about women. They made a woman king. <laughs> We're not kings, we're queen. We're joint heirs to a throne. Most everything in Hollywood is raising up the woman. The woman, elevating the woman. They pushing the brothers out. No, not in the kingdom. In the kingdom, right holiness is still right. God's design is still right. My husband runs the household, do you understand me? And as a woman, why would I want to run the household? Unless you got a little Jezebel in you. I don't want to run the household. I want to sit soft and pretty. Just bring out my sword when it's time to slay. Then I go back. Do you understand me? But this is why when we're out of sync with God's will, you'll be overworked. You'll be overworked and underpaid. Do you understand me? And what he did, he took the men out the home a lot of times. Or even if the men are in the home, they've been silenced and the woman is running the house. So you got to examine your house. And that doesn't mean you run, you, 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 because you're supposed to, women are supposed to love their wives as Christ loves the church. So all that machioism and that, that, no, nah, that ain't it either. All right. Women are called to respect their husbands. Men are called to love their wives. But this world has made it where women and men don't even want to get married anymore. And our men are not going through deliverance. Most, most some women ain't going through deliverance. They scared of deliverance. They want to sit on a psychologist's couch for 20 and 30 years. Tell me your problems. Tell me your problems. Talking about your problems is one aspect of it. Deliverance sets you free. Psychology cannot set you free from demons. They'll medicate your demons. That's right. Remote got the, the, the men's balls in a vice grip. Do you understand? Excuse my and a, The men's testicles in a vice grip. No more. Kings, it's time to arise. It's time to arise. God bless you. That's right. We rested. We, we soft girls now. We warriors. Warriors is still in me. Don't get it. Don't ever get that twisted because I'm a warrior. That's how I was born. You understand me? That's how God made me. But I'm sitting pretty. No, I'm sitting pretty, boo. That overwork, see, that's what, that's what, see, Satan, he took the men out the house and got the women to work. And that's why you're stressed out. You're trying to be everything to everybody. No, I ain't everything to everybody, but Jesus is. I'll lead you right to Jesus. I'm not here to save you. You're not here to save everybody. And that's why when you don't know your boundaries, that's why I had to tighten up my business boundaries. Because people was trying to get me to operate out of God's design and my wounds because I want to save everybody and help everybody. It was pulling me too much. And God had to say, sit down, little girl. Sit down somewhere, Shannon. Don't you know he'll sit you down. He'll make you take a rest. When you don't rest. I'm talking to myself now. 
He'll make you rest when you don't want to rest. And he had to say, no, no, don't let these people run you ragged because people will unheal. People will run you ragged. And then they'll go on, they'll steal your oil and then they'll go on to the next channel and act like you ain't taught them nothing. So he said, sit down somewhere. Do you understand me? But this is why women are overworked. All right. Because we're not where you weren't designed like that. I want to rest in my femininity, in my godly femininity. I'm resting, boo. I'm not here. I'm not. My cape is off. I'm not here to save anybody. Because God already sent a savior. I just got to point you to him. Do you understand me? So that's right. We're resting. We're resting. We're resting. Rest. Aren't you tired? Aren't you tired? Aren't you tired of giving your last when nobody will be there for you? Aren't you tired? I, I was tired. I said, God, this ain't it right here. I, I'm tired. I'm ready to rest. And I know some of you are, can't do that in the season that you're in, all right? Because it was different seasons for everything. But once you come to that realization that you wanted to live, that you wanted to rest, now I'm living my dreams. Now I'm living the dreams that I dreamt in 2017. I, I, I'm, I'm living beyond my dreams. And God is just really, I'm just getting started. I've been doing this for two years. God is just getting me started in this thing. Who knows where I'll be in a year? By the grace of God, God willing. Who knows where you'll be in a year if you give God your obedience and you submit to his design. When you're in his design, you don't have to worry about getting tired so much. When we operate outside of our boundaries, that's when we get tired. When too many people are pulling at us, too many things are clamoring for our attention. That's a sign to me that I need to regroup, regroup, reroute me, reroute me, reroute me, Lord, reroute me. But that's how Satan likes. He likes it. He likes it when we're like that. He likes it when we're not on one accord. He likes it when men are, are walking in whoredom. When they think that their man manhood because of trauma, because of, of generational curses, all right, because of grooming and conditioning, he loves when men walk in whoredom. He loves when women walk in whoredom and, and fornication and shacking up. If you ain't living with, if you living with them and that ain't your spouse, you out of order. You out of order. You out of the God, you out of God's will. Oh, we getting married? No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. We get we get married in, in six weeks. No, you're not. No, you're not. You said that. You said that six years ago. No, you're not. You're still there. You out of order, girlfriend. You out of order, brother. If that's not your wife, you out of order. Oh, we stay together for the bills. You out of order. Jehovah Jireh will provide. You're out of order. And when you're out of the order of God's will, you'll pick up demons. You'll pick up a wildebeest. You'll pick up somebody that's not good for you. Do you understand me? I know the world says do it. Save on money. Do it the world's way. But I'm telling you, holiness is still right. Do you understand me? So he loves it when we walk in sexual immorality. Do it your way. Do as thy wills. The Aleister Crawley 666 anthem, the Jay-Z Beyonce anthem, do as thy wills. He loves that. Will you adapt to swinger lifestyle? Oh, don't you know there's men and women that are married, that are in relationships, that are in swinger lifestyles. Do we want to talk about that? Do we want to go there? Talking about you in an open relationship. Just go be by yourself then. You scared to be by yourself. You want somebody in, in your foolishness with you. I'm in a poly, Andre. This is the sexuality of men, men and women and narcissists. Narcissists will lead you right into a swinger lifestyle. Oh, yes, they will. They'll lead you right into polygamy. Oh, I just want to bring somebody in. It's my birthday. I've seen men that want to bring another man, man in with a wife. Girl, Molly, you in danger, girl. You in some danger. You in some real danger when your man wants to bring another person into your bedroom. I wish a Negro would. Try to bring somebody up in here if you want to. Try to even let it come out your mouth. She's a runner. She's a track star. Man.
I ain't in all of this. All of this. All of this ain't enough for you. Just like Candyland over here. Curves and heels and shoe. And I ain't enough for you. <laughs> Molly, you in danger, girl. You should be insulted. Threesome with some nasty people. And then bring you, you walk around and you'll get that nasty woman's disease. You'll be around there like Suge Avery. Look, mm, remember how Mr. Had, Mr. was bold, wasn't he? He wasn't only abusing silly. He gonna bring his mistress into the house. <laughs> some of you, some of you, oh, who am I talking to? Somebody in here, who's, you, you need to be set free on today. Your man done bought his mistress on your block, into your house, into your bedroom. Talking about this my cousin. This my cousin. Ain't that what happened to old girl on Soul Food? It was her cousin. You better watch who you inviting into your house. A narcissist will sleep with your cousin, your mama, your daddy. Oh, it was a Netflix special. Well, this man, who told, I don't know if Jasmine told me about that. Somebody told me about that. And it was, he was like, he kidnapped the daughter. I don't know if y'all remember this. This man slept with the mama. He slept with the daddy. He kidnapped the child, raised, raped her, kidnapped her. He slept with the whole family. I was like, if that ain't a sociopathic psychopath, he slept with the daddy, y'all. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Girl, we used to watch that movie in the summer of 86. I don't know when it came. We, I know every line in that movie. Every line, girl. <laughs> Every line. <laughs> now look, home fist to shave, mister. Oh, yeah. That probably was some witchcraft, something back then. She was running through that field with them flowers. She had to stop me. Girl, don't go. You don't get me rocking. Don't get me rocking, Tiffany. Don't get me rocking, <laughs> Mindy Mahogany. Thank you, Katrina. God bless you. Y'all share this message. Y'all, somebody needs to be blessed by this message. Do you understand me? Swing set in a seesaw relationship. Do you understand? God bless you, husband. May God bless you and, and help you give you the mental uh, fortitude to help you pass your exams. Hallelujah. But I forgot what movie that was. Yay. I forgot what movie that was. He's. I was like, man, this is how a narcissist that's higher on the spectrum, a sociopath works. It was. I forgot what it was. The ex narc was a was with a couple of my friends. They didn't care. Oh yeah, when they start sleeping with your whole friend group and and all that, that's how they do. I forgot what movie that was. Rogers is right. I forgot what movie that was. I was like, he and groomed and conditioned. And then the see what they do is get you to compromise. When you compromise, you are a sitting duck for a narcissist. They get you to compromise on your boundaries, and all it takes. All right, all it takes is a little questioning. Don't you want to bring somebody in here? Don't you want to do this? Now they got you swinging from the chandeliers, got you in some BDSM, and then once they get through with you, they going on to your children, some of them. These people are wicked. These people are wicked. Got you in polyandry, talking about I want another husband, I want another spouse, I want another, you ain't getting another nothing up in here. You can go sit your, go on in the other room. Gone to the man cave or something. Thank you, mercy. God bless you. May God uh, return it to you over and above measure. Hallelujah. All right. And this is not just people in the world. This is believers. Look, I spoke, if you go on TikTok at night, it's this one couple and, and he got two girls and they on there. I'm like, why are they on here? What? I mean, who are you trying to convince? And they're trying to convince people that poly, poly polygamy is, is the way to go. Okay, okay, do what you do, do what you do. Round there spreading diseases and and swapping soul ties and demons. And then they never tell the truth. They never really tell the truth about these relationships. Human nature, you're gonna get jealous. Do you understand? Somebody in that mix is going to be jealous. Oh yeah, we're just loving light and you know, she gets Tuesday, I get Thursday. You know, when I'm on my cycle, she takes over. <laughs> I don't have to worry about it. You know, he pays our bills. Girl, these, what well, they did it in the Bible. 
That was a different time. Do you understand that? Now, and then they'll try to use the Bible. Well, it's King Solomon. You ain't no king. This your king. You ain't no king. Cain. You ain't no Cain. You understand me? You don't even provide. Talking, trying to, you don't even provide for one. Talking about you. You po polygamy. You are uh, in polygamy. You don't even provide for one. You don't even take care of your children. Talking about you taking care of these women. Boy, if you don't go sit down somewhere in a dusty, crusty cell. And this is believers. These are some people that call themselves believers. Do you understand? Well, sit in church with they two women. The devil is a whole trying to convince themselves. So you got to thank you, PhD. Thank you, sis, for becoming a member. God bless you. All right. So you got to watch their friends. You got to watch your environment. In that biblical, all right, you hang with one fool, you hang with two fools, you'll become the third. Good company or bad company uh, corrupts good morals. It corrupts good character. So this is why we have to watch who we hang around. It ain't because you think you better. Oh, she thinks she better than me. No, I don't think I'm better. I just live righteously. Do you understand me? Because holiness is still righteous. So there, your environment will influence your behavior. And before you know it, the narcissist will get you into, you'll be tricking and, and swinging and into, into alternative life. And narcissists, some of them love porn. They love pornea. They love pornea. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? All right, then you won't know your identity. All right. You won't know your left from your right. And then the thing about it, well, see, when you're hanging with people like this, they'll influence you. The world influ tries to influence you. That's why you got to tune that. You got to watch your ear and eye gates. See, people in sin typically hang around other people that make them feel comfortable. That's why for some people, they can't watch me too long because that Ruach Kodesh will begin to speak and it will begin to convict them. This ain't no, uh, uh, I ain't going to even say it. This ain't no motivational speech. The Holy Spirit, the word cuts, the word convicts. It makes you get up out that burning bed. I ain't here to make you feel good. Where has feeling good got you? Where has it gotten you? All right. Where has it gotten you? All right. So you got to watch. You got to watch who they hang around. You got to watch their friends. You got to watch yourself. All right. And I've seen men. Don't, don't make mistakes because they're macho. I've seen men that are strong as the day is long, but underneath and behind closed doors, they are sweet as pudding pie. Do you understand me? I, I live with it. Do you understand me? This ain't no game. I ain't telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I lived through. Bodybuilding, lifting weights. And I, I thought just because he was raised around women. No, it was something else. It was some demons in there that he was wrestling with. All right. So underneath that exterior can be a, a hobo trying by sexual man. Underneath that exterior can be a, a, a try hobo by woman. And you think you got a heterosexual woman and she over here entertaining all kind of things for supply. Do you understand me? Thank you. I'm just going to say, uh, is it all? I don't want to mess it up. So thank you, A. Thank you, Queen A. Thank you so much. God bless you. Hallelujah. All right. Now, some men are feminine, a little feminine because they were raised by women. You won't know. And some need some testosterone. That, this is why brothers need to be around brothers. Sisters need to be around sisters sometimes. All right. And then we need to be able to come together and mix. All right. All right. Some people need some testosterone to balance out that estrogen. Can you imagine? I was like, I knew I couldn't be, I couldn't be that way. I couldn't can't be that way. Can you imagine two of me? Estrogen and estrogen cycles. No, 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 no. It's only, there can only be one. <laughs> there can only be one to balance out. I need some testosterone to balance out this estrogen. Do you understand me? No, I, I need some, uh, what's the chromosome? I need the opposite. Mm -mm, I need the opposite. Mm, the way I'm built. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I need, I need, mm-mm. 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 All right. I can't imagine. And then go to doctor for the testosterone, right? Trying to become some girl soft as pudding pie, Jasmine. Soft as pudding pie. I seen it. I seen it. All right. I ain't telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know. All right. So how Satan entices and traps and ensnares trauma. Trauma. We're going to talk about that next week. I'm going to talk about um, uh, new age and divination. I'm going to step on your toes with your sororities and fraternities next week. I am. I am. I'm coming for you because I want you free. All right. All right. But trauma, trauma is a gateway 
trauma. Because when you're traumatized, you'll go searching for power because you have a void. That's Satan's goal is to inflict trauma, inflict pain, inflict heartbreak onto you. How look, how many? Oh, see, I had to be delivered when I when I and I'll talk about that next week, too. I told her I went to go see a spiritual advisor. No, God told me that. No, I had to repent for that. And some people have gone to herbalists and hypnotists and and uh, psychic mediums and and no, because you just want to know the future. But what does the Bible say? We can't do that. I will set my face against anyone who turns to mediums and spiritists to prostitute themselves by following them. And I will cut them off from their people. Yes, that's Old Testament, but the law still applies. Do you understand me? So I had to repent for that. If you did that, repent. All right. That's part of Satan's goal is to in, uh, inflict uh, trauma and rape and molestation at an early age. Do you understand me? This is why a, a lot of people ha have been abused and they don't realize it was at the hands of a narcissist or a narcissistic person. It takes a narcissistic person, a, a, a spirit of Jezebel, a, get, a, must, a legion of others to do these things to children, to do these things to grown men and women. It takes a perverted mindset. Thank you, God bless you too. May God bless you and return that back to you above measure. All right, that's right. I mean, I was in uh, Freemasonry and an Eastern star and all that mess, all right? so. Uh, no, it ain't about nothing. It ain't about nothing. And it's cloaked with Bible scriptures. But they, look, mm, they don't tell you what, what, what happens in the dark. And those of you in sororities and fraternities who have come out of her, you know what happens when you cross the burning sands. You know the gods of Minerva and Athena that you were, that you had set an oath to. You know, you might be in denial. You might be in denial, but the truth will set you free. Do you understand me? It'll set you free, set you right on free. Yes, it will. All right. So it'll bring you when you're uh, um, traumatized. All right. Because you're looking for uh, answers. You want to be empowered. It can bring you uh, uh, into certain forms of witchcraft. And then there's a such thing as ancestral curses and generational curses and familiar spirits and time release curses. Say nose through the monitoring spirits. You thought that was your friend. You thought that was your partner. That was a whole monitoring spirit sent against your bloodline formed as a weapon to not make you prosper, to bring you into witchcraft and idolatry, to bring you against, to make you an uh, enemy against Yahweh. Do you understand me? So a lot of people have been traumatized and they don't know how to process those, that trauma. That's why parents, when as you get delivered, you gotta, you have to give your children resources because they go through things too. And that thing is just waiting. It's waiting for an opportunity to be released into their lives. All right. So narcissists, a lot of times, are the one doing the molestations in our family, doing the rapes, being the peeping toms, and, and inflicting the se sexual perversion. They are the ones that are doing that. Narcissists are not. Do you understand me? That's a that's demons. That's demonic. And they'll introduce STDs, sexually transmitted diseases, and sexually transmitted uh, demons into you. They'll have your pH balance all out of whack. Now, I don't know if men have pH balance, but as a woman, all right, you deal with a narcissist and, and they doing strange things for a piece of change, your pH balance will be all out of whack. Do you understand me? Skin messed up, hair falling out, stress, cortisone levels all out of whack. Your body will crave theirs. Do you understand me, man or woman? Once you get that soul tie and then you, you, you break up with them or whatever the case is, your body will crave theirs. I tell you, some people act like animals when it comes to sex. That's what Satan wants. He wants you in an animalistic state where you don't think, you just do. Some of y'all act like you can't live without sex. You can live without sex. Yes, you can. Now, God, did he make our bodies, uh, uh, you know, he, he made them like he made it. Yes, he did. All right, but if sex is controlling you, you live by the flesh and that flesh will kill you. It was marriage, sex was designed between, uh, in a, for marriage between a woman and a man. Keep your back door closed. Keep your back door closed. That's for somebody. 
Narcissists love sodomy. Yes, they do. They love sodomy. Now, you ain't got to say it in the comments. They love sodomy. Yes, they do. Because they're sadistic. They love the back door. Yes, they do. All kind of things. Sticking their thing in you. Then you wonder why you got UTIs. People are sticking their things in multiple places and holes they shouldn't be stuck in. Me understand me. Some of them love sodomy. They're sadistic. You got to watch it. They'll have you all in all kind of doctor's offices. Do you understand me? Yes, they will. Yes, they will. Right. They, they love it. They love, they nasty. They love it. They any any a hole, all they need is a hole. It can be an animal hole, a baby hole. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to some of them. Now, of course, some of them are high on the spectrum. Some of them are fighting that, and then some of them they just they just submit to it because they don't know how to fight it. Do you understand me? Animals, yes, animals. We talk about that. Animals, sis, yeah, animals, bestiality. They into man, these people are perverted. Pedophilia. Why you think the world is going? I told you Satan is transgender and he wants you, he wants a genderless society. That's why these people talking about she, her, he, her, 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 the pronoun people. Man, what are you? We see what you are. All right. Foolishness. Satan wants people to be like him. He wants you confused. Do you understand me? You understand me. That's right. You got to, you got to, mm -mm. you got to separate that stuff. All right. And so these people are into all, th all these things. And you see like with Balenciaga, I talked about that in a couple of messages. They want, they want a society that doesn't protect the children. Because when you are with a narcissist, you'll give, you'll, you'll make your child a small sacrifice. I've talked about this many times, how it was a small sacrifice for my mother to stay in a narcissistic marriage. Simple. It, it's just that simple. It's hard to hear. It is what it is. I knew that at an early age. I knew that at 13 when my stepfather molested me and nothing was done about it. I knew I was a sacrifice at an early age. God showed me that I was a sacrifice. And if you're not careful, you'll make your child, you'll make your, you'll make people around you a small sacrifice. I tell you, that's why when somebody's in a narcissistic relationship, mm -mm, I ain't trying to talk you out of it. You got to come to that knowledge yourself. And most of the time when people are still in soul ties, uh-uh, you ain't getting in my circle. I'll coach you. I'll mentor you, but you ain't getting in my circle because I know at any time you are pookie. You a pookie. You will try to sacrifice me for your God. No, mm, you being there doing witchcraft, trying to, no, nah, you ain't taking, you ain't taking my star. You ain't taking my destiny. You can't take it, witch. Do you understand me? So you got to be careful when people are around you and they, they are, they are in a narcissistic and a Jezebelic relationship. They'll do anything for their gods because they're in idolatry and they may say, oh no, I would never do that. Man, it, to be in a narcissistic relationship, you have to live a lie. You, you are living a lie by default. You live a lie every day. And if somebody wants to live that lie, who am I? Who am I? Man, I ain't about to convince you. Girl, I'll tell you, man, because some people don't know that they're being abused. Like, I didn't know I was being, I, like, I didn't know. So it took somebody saying something to wake me up. But once that happened, everything started to happen very quickly. And God got me out of that thing. Some people know and they want they want that narcissist so bad. They're willing to allow their children to get molested. They're willing to allow the, a narcissist to beat on their child. They're willing, they're willing to do whatever for their man. I've talked about this. I've done watched the video for my man. Men are the same way. They'll let their whole children go for a new family. All right. So you gotta you gotta understand what the nar what the narcissist plan is. So you must face your trauma if you want to run from it. You gotta face it at some time. You can't be like Jonah and running and running. She's a runner. She's a track star. You gotta look. You gotta put your big girl panties and your big boy underwear on and face that trauma. Those desires must be submitted, and that means you gotta consecrate your home, your life, your friends. Things are gonna get cleared out while you're in ICU. And it doesn't feel good. But if you go through deliverance and you process that trauma, all right, you'll be better off. And you got to remember, if you go back, if you go back to what God has delivered you from and you open those doors, those demons are coming in 
full force. A total lie, KD. All right, so don't play with it. Don't play with it. Come on, baby. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. Yeah, same here. Same here. Same here. My brother turned to a narcissist, and he's just like my mother. And I was a scapegoat. Thank God. Didn't feel good, but now I thank God for pulling me out of that. I thank God. No longer am I a sacrifice. No longer. No longer. All right. So let's talk about the spirits of Bathamint and Baal. Really the spirit of Baal. All right. Let's talk about that. All right. So in Deuteronomy uh, 13, certain men, the children of Belial, are gone out from among you and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city, saying, let us go and serve other gods, which ye have not known. So you can study this for yourself. Spirit, the uh, Belial is a uh, trans uh, alliteration from the Hebrew uh, Belial, which means worthless one. All right. The spirit of Belial desires for us to tolerate these evil, vile acts. That's where we're going, where people call good evil and evil good. Don't you know there are some sins that are an abomination? Yeah. Some sins are an abomination. They're abomination. All right. So when you have a spirit of Bilal, you'll see rape, you'll see incest. Do we want to talk about that? We'll see that in the family and nobody will hear, see no evil, hear no evil, say no evil. The family's under a spirit of Jezebel and a strong man of Bilal as well. You'll see incest, you'll see molestation, you'll see sexual abuse, you'll see all kinds of sexual impurity. You'll see this in cults, cults, you'll see this a whole lot. All right, where there's that spirit of Jezebel, Bilal is working in tandem. I've seen it too many times. Where you have Jezebel, you have Bathemeth, you have Baal, you have Bilal. All right, and of course you have Leviathan and Python and all those. In there. It's, it's a trio, all right? You'll have filthiness and lewdness and, and lasciviousness and sodomy, all right? And you'll have obscenity. That's Bilal, Bathemeth, all of them, Baal, Beelzebub, all of them, all right? Because yeah, demons have an insatiable appetite, all right? And then when children get molested, this is what people, especially people who are homosexual, and, they, and a lot of them don't want to face this. And, and we don't tell the truth about this thing. Uh, and because they are in agreement with that, I mean, you, you can't do anything until they come out of agreement with that. You have to want to be set free from that. All right. And fornication the same way. Let's not, let's, I'm not, I don't want to just harp on homosexuality. Fornication is just as bad. If you're sleeping with somebody outside of marriage, it's just as bad. Do you understand me? It's just as bad. Okay. All right. But a lot of times, uh, molestation, they get molested, molested. Boys will get molested by women and boys will get molested by men. Girls will get molested by women. Girls get molested by men at a young age. And then they're wrestling with these feelings. They want to say, I was born that way. And sometimes because the mother, what the mother and father and the grandfather have introduced into the bloodline, all right, that seed will manifest even while the baby is in the mother's womb. And they come out. It, it ain't no gay babies. I ain't never went to the, ba the, the, the baby union and baby going, eh, eh, eh. ain't no gay babies. Ain't no gay babies. I ain't never seen a baby at the at the um uh, at the at the baby place in in, in NICU or, or the I in, in the Neo whatever unit. I ain't never seen no win baby. I ain't never seen no stud baby. I ain't never seen no butch baby. Do you hear me? All right. So you're not born that way. You're not born that way. You just came into agreement with it, but nobody is born that way. Since I ain't lying, I ain't never seen it. If I'm lying, tell me I'm lying. I ain't never seen it. I ain't never seen no stud baby. I ain't never seen it. I ain't never seen no lipstick lesbian baby. I was born this way. I ain't never seen it. I ain't never seen it. So stop saying you was born that way. You weren't born that way. You weren't. You didn't come out flaming. You ain't come out sashaying. No, you learned that. You was groomed that way. Tell the truth. Tell the truth so you can get set free. Because that's the only thing that's going to set you free. All right. Is it Coach Letitia's birthday? Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, sis. Is it your birthday? All right. Thank you for stopping by. 
Thank you for stopping by. Yes. Okay. So we got to tell the truth about that thing. Okay. We got to tell the truth. Right. Words have power. If you come into agreement and the world will tell you, was born, and you start, oh, I was born this way. No, you weren't. You were made in God's image. You were made in God's image. Okay. But Bilal is, um, the etymology of the word is often uh, understood as lacking worth. All right, so you'll see Bilal, Belhor, all right, just different spellings for the word uh, Bilal, all right? So you'll see this in Deuteronomy uh, 15, 9, 2 Samuel 22, 5, Psalms 18, as ungodly men, all right? Uh, uh, it means without yoke. So um, the that spirit, in other words, these demons are vile. And when that spirit gets introduced through molestation, through trauma, all right, through through generational curses, it takes root and it becomes something, you know, bigger than what the person feels that um, they can control. All right. And then you'll see a spirit of Asmodeus. Have you I've talked about a, a spirit of Asmodeus. All right. It's, that's those spirits are wicked. They are ruling wicked spirits. OK, so you, if you want to learn about Bilal, you can study that uh, a lot, but you can see this is one of the spirits that work in tandem with the narcissist. And then Bilal works in tandem with Jezebel because Jezebel, they're ruled by the Jezebel spirit. All right. We can see how the kingdom of hell is not divided. There is a well calculated plan to keep you bound. All right. Demons work in groupings and they have structure. All right. So there's a strong man. All right. That that the narcissist is dealing with. And if you don't get out of that, you'll be dealing with that, too. So Jezebel is one of the many spirits that possess or demonize a narcissist. But a spirit of Bilal is usually in there as well. And that spirit introduces uh, uh, sexual immorality along with Jezebel. All right. The Bible says, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou suffered that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and eat things sacrificed unto idols. All right. So Bilal works with Jezebel to entrap, to ensnare, to seduce, seduce. Jezebel is a seducing spirit. Delilah is a seducing spirit and it wants to lead you into fornication. That's what this world, can't you see how this world is ruled and reigned by an octopus spirit, by Jezebel with so many tentacles, Babylon, that you can see the, the spirits that sit on top of the principalities that sit on top of these regions. You understand me? So Jezebel can manifest through false teaching because it is a, a seducing spirit. It is to lead people astray from the truth and cause them to go into error. All right. So we can see this and we see spirits of idolatry, whoredom, prostitution, debauchery. We can see this, can't we? And debauchery, uh, sensual. All right. A lot of these people are very sensual and sexual. All right. That's very carnal. You know, and, and when you look at movies, you really we really shouldn't be watching people having sex on on and sex scenes. Like if I see that now, like I have to fast forward, like my spirit can't even can't even look at that. But the world has seduced us and made it normal to where we see love making right on TV. You could be watching a show. You could be watching a show. I ain't lying. <laughs> you could be watching a show, all right? And, and then here comes the sex scene. I remember Solomon was watching this series, right? And the series started out good. And then before you know it, the two men were in there having sex. I mean, you can't watch nothing these days, anything these days, without a sex scene. Without either, it's going to be either with a straight person or with a uh, homosexual. I mean, you can't watch anything these days. You really can't. That's It does. And that's sad. It really is. And then our kids are watching, people are wa watching. And it's like watching pornography on regular TV. You know, before you used to have to go to HBO and, and different channels and, and Showtime and Netflix and all these other channels. Now, uh -uh, now it's just right on on regular TV. You know, when we was growing up. It used to be, you know, you used to have to watch uh, certain channels. Remember, it was like Benny Hinn and and uh, I'm telling my age. I'm, I'm really telling my age. It was certain certain shows that we knew that was gonna show them channels. All right. Now it's just right. It's just right on TV. 
right? They want to prevent innocence. Satan loves compromise. He loves, and if you're with the narcissist, I'm glad you brought up that point because if you're with the narcissist, they hate your purity. And this is why even when we're children, they hate the innocence of children. Narcissists hate you because of your purity. If you stand for something, the world will hate you. If you stand for God's word, this world will hate you. If you're not sleeping around, if you're teaching against homosexuality and fornication, it will make people feel funny and they will say that you are being hateful and why are you judging me? And only God, they will start singing the Tupac Sinners anthem. Only God can judge me and I'm like, you're doggone right. Don't you know God is going to judge you? Does that not make you fearful that one day you're going to have to stand before God and give a testimony and give a testament to what you've done? Doesn't that make you want to pause? Doesn't that make you think twice about that sexual sin? That doesn't make you think twice. It'll make me think twice. All right. So what harmony is there between Christ and Bilal? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? So Baal's work is to cause you to, br to bring you into compromise, to bring you into sexual immorality and debauchery. It is to bring to morally bankrupt the nation. And we can see how the spirit of Allah rests upon this nation. It's here. So some sins, there are sins and some sins are abominations. There are abominations. Do you understand me? And then uh, Bilal works with Jezebel to bring you into idolatry, all right? These are children of Belial. Narcissists are children of Belial. Yes, they are. Narcissists are not Yahweh's children. People will ask me, are narcissists God's children? No, they, no, they're not God's children. I don't care if they say they're there. They're, I don't care what they say they are. You can say you are anything in this day. I saw a, a message the other day where this lady was like, I'm trans age. I was like, now what is this? What is this? What is this? Look, she said she was trans age now. She doesn't identify as being a 13 year old, a 30 year old woman. She identifies as a six year old. Let me plug my, she said she ain't 30, she's six. Yeah, that's what she said. So now I don't have to, I'll be 47 next month. I don't have to identify as a 47 year old woman. I identify as a 25 year old woman. Yep, I'm trans age. The devil is a liar. I'm my age. I'm whatever God say I am. Yeah, that's what they say. They say trans age. You can just, now this is where we're going, where you can be whatever it is that you want to be. You don't want to be 30. You don't want to be 40. What do you want to be? What age do you want to be today? What do you want to be today? You want to be a man? You want to be a woman? You want to be a plant? I identify as a plant. I identify as a tree. This is the world where we are living in. Jesus is getting up off the throne. Do you hear me? So I don't care. These people are crazy. Trans age. That's what they said. That's what they said. Identify as crazy. <laughs> right. 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 They, whatever they want to be. They just they just wake up and be that. I don't I don't identify as a 46-year-old woman. I identify as, I mean, they just make up. What am I today? No, that's because you don't know your identity. All right. So salvation is for those who have been grafted in, all right, who have accepted Yeshua HaMashiach as their personal savior. Anyone can say they love God, but not everyone serves them. You will know them by their fruits. Do they fruit say they're a Christian? Do they fruit say they're a follower of Christ? What does the fruit say? Because everybody says they're a Christian until it's time to follow Christ. What does your fruit say? So I don't go by, well, well, you know, I'm a Christian. Yeah, I, I, you know, I was raised in church. That's what people are like. Well, I was raised in church. 
man, you 80 years old. Talking about what you was raised in. I was raised in a church. What, do you follow God now? In and out of the four wall church? The four wall church is not what sanctifies you, is not what purifies you. It's the blood of Jesus that sanctifies you and purifies you. Do you understand me? But these people, anybody can say what they can be whatever they want to be. All right. And these spirits usher in whoredom to seduce you. Jezebel does not work alone. So Bilal works with these spirits to, to draw people into abominable sins against Yahweh. So wherever you see a narcissist, you're going to, in, in a narcissistic Jezebelic system, you're going to see idolatry. You're going to see uh, sexual immorality. You're going to see those things. Those things come with those spirits come with that with that system. So Jezebel works through control and manipulation and domination and intimidation. So the spirit of Jezebel uh, works people and gets people into sin and compromise. We saw that with with um, with Ahab. Ahab was married to Jezebel. See, Ahab, Jezebel gets you to make an alliance out of fear. That's what happens when you want a narcissist, when you were protected, when you were little, when whatever, you'll come into agreement with the demon. You understand me? All right. When you weren't loved when you were little, now you come into agreement with Jezebel to pervert your body and to pervert your mind and prostitute your mind and prostitute your children because you don't think you're enough. You don't think you don't trust Jehovah Jireh to provide for you. So you think that you have to stay under a narcissist rule. Does that mean you may be homeless? Does that mean that you may be on the street? Does that mean you may have to downsize? Possibly, possibly. But when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, you'll come from under the control of Jezebel. Do you understand me? All right. So I, so you can see how sexual abuse, sexual perversion to, to, from people as children. And when you when you deal with that, when, when you've been molested and abused, you have to deal with the spiritual side. It's not all psychological. You got to deal with the spirits that were imparted into you. And because the, the world has psychology has overtaken, you have people who are getting medicated. Medication does not work on demons. Pharmacia and pharmacos does not work on demons. I remember when I was going through depression and they gave me pills for depression. My body literally rejected that. Pills for anxiety because they made me feel like a zombie. And I don't know about you, but I like to be clear headed and clear minded. I like all my mental faculties to be clicking on all cylinders. And my brain, I was traumatized. I was so tired and my brain was fried and I was not functioning correctly. But the answer was not in pharmacias. Now, don't get me wrong. If you feel like you need to be on that for a season, you do what God and Holy Spirit and your doctor tell you to do. Because there is a physiological and a psychological component. I'm just here to tell you, I've seen people be in therapy. When people tell me I've been in therapy for 5, 10, 20, 30 years, I'm like, how? How? What? Something is missing, baby girl. Something is missing. You should not be sitting on a therapist's couch for 5, 10, 20, 30 years. Do you understand me? You shouldn't. I don't care what nobody said. That's me. All right. Call it what you, you shouldn't be sitting on a therapist's couch for 30 years. What you talking about? The same thing over and over? Talk therapy. Talk therapy. How does that work for you? How has that worked for you? So you got to understand what, what these things come to do. All right. They're introducing a spirit of death, a spirit of torment, a spirit of homosexuality, a spirit of whoredom onto you. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. So you do what you have to do. All right. You do what you have to do. I'm not against therapy. I, I went to therapy. I'm not saying that. But therapy didn't deliver me. Therapy gave me the revelation of what I need to be delivered from. All right. But I needed to process that because I had never processed, processed the abuse. 
I didn't know why. Get to the root of why. Get to the root of why. Why are you, when you see your children acting out, get to the root of why. When you, when you act out, get to the root of why. Why am I acting this way? Why do I think this behavior is okay? Get to the root of why. Get to the root of why you have that spirit spouse. Get to the root of why that incubus and succubus spirit is coming in. Get to the root of why you have a demonic soul tie and a demonic covenant and you're being visited by demons. Get to the root of why. And I've learned that some people don't want to maintain deliverance. They just want to be free from the demons. They're not ready to walk this lifestyle out. This is a lifestyle. Consecration is a lifestyle. Righteousness is a lifestyle. Obedience is a lifestyle. All right. So the sexual profile, the narcissist. Let, let's talk about this real quick. Let's talk about this. All right. And I said this before. Let me put this banner up. Narcissists are whatever, whatever it takes, whatever the wind, whatever, whichever the way the wind blows, some of them. Okay. You might say, well, my mind, I didn't catch mine doing it. I didn't catch mine. You know, whatever. All right. A lot of them are whatever it takes. You may not see it. And that's why I say, like, you don't know the depths of the narcissist. You don't know the depths of the narcissist's um, uh, nature. You really don't. You only know what you know. You really don't know everything that the narcissist has done. You have one piece of the puzzle. You really don't know everything the narcissist has done. Anybody that thinks, oh, I know the narcissist. I, I know my narc. Ew, first of all, ew, ew. Uh, but secondly, you really don't. You know one side of the narcissist. The narcissist is a chameleon. Do you understand me? The narcissist is straight up on demon time. So what you think you know about the narcissist is only one piece of it. It's one piece of their demonic puzzle because the narcissist stays on demon time. Do you understand me? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. They stay on demon time. Do you understand me? So these people are somatic. They are cerebral. There's some of them are malignant. All right. Whatever it takes. So we know somatics, they are seductive. They use, they are sensual. They are Bilal. They are Bilal personified. Do you understand me? When I say Satan is the embodiment is or narcissist are the physical embodiment of Satan in human form. I'm not saying that to be me. I'm saying it because it's true. Do you understand me? So these, these uh, somatic narcissists, a lot of times they love the gym. They're very much into their bodies. They'll have plastic surgery. They'll, they'll do whatever they can to keep themselves young. And there's nothing wrong with, with being young and keeping yourself young. But narcissists know if they get older, it lessens their supply. That's why when they get old, they get mean. Narcissists don't get nicer when they get old. They get meaner. Do you understand me? So you think you'll think you find the love of your life. No, they found a way to manipulate you. They found a way to manipulate your trauma. And, and let's go here. All right, let's go here. You see, I've seen women, a lot of men, has had their virginities taken. Let's go here. Thank you, Lord. Let's go here. Help me, Holy Spirit. Because somebody needs to get delivered from this. A lot of men have had sex with older women when they are younger. Mary Kay Letourneau took that 13-year-old boy's virginity. Do you understand me? That was not a cougar. That was a pedophile. Do you understand me? And there's some sick women out here. These men are getting turned out early, at an early age, molested early, and they, they've grown up to think that it's cute. It's not cute, brother, when a young, when a woman, an older woman, a babysitter molests you. It's not cute. It's sexual abuse. It's pedophilia. And it's wrong. 
And this world has conditioned men to think that it's something, a bravado thing. You better watch your friends, girlfriend. Some of them want your sons. Do you understand me? You better watch your babysitters. These ain't cougars. These are pedophiles. These are women who are disgusting, who care nothing about that young boy's soul. They just want to feel attractive. I just want to feel attractive. So, so what if I get supply from this young boy? I want to know I still got it. I still got it. If you, if it takes you being seducing a young boy to know that you still got it, no girlfriend, you got issues. I want to get my groove back. No, you're disgusting. You're disgusting. So watch your so-called BFFs around your sons. Because a lot of these men got turned out by their mama's friends. A lot of them got turned out by their teachers. I've seen teachers walking around, got big old bodacious booties. And you wearing, why are you wearing that? Why are you wearing that in the classroom? And the brothers in the comments, they don't know no better. They don't know no better. They stuck on stupid. They don't know no better. They think it's cute. When a woman with a big old bodacious booty is a teacher and they say, well, why wouldn't my, I wish the teachers were like that in my day. No, you sick. You just as sick as she is because she ain't got no business wearing that. Righteousness is still holding. I'm not no frumpy woman, best believe, but I know what's appropriate around children. And if I was a teacher, I wouldn't be wearing something to accentuate my 36, 24, 36, because I know, I know my power. Let's be real. We know what we doing. We know what we doing. We know what we doing. Now, some things you can't hide. I ain't saying, you know, you know, some people say, oh, you, you wear yoga pants, you're going to hell. Yeah, that's a lie. You ain't going to hell, but you don't, you don't be around here. You know, you check yourself, check your environment, check your motives. Do you understand? Yeah, I wear yoga pants. Yeah, I'm working with some. I'm holding some. I ain't walking around here looking like uh, Mother Teresa. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. And you religious people, I know you hate it. I know you hate it. All right, but there's there's a medium. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. So men are the face of sexual abuse and perversion. But some of these women are just as wicked as the men. Do you understand me? And now all they want to know is they still got it. All they want to know is that they can still pull your man, pull your son and your daughter all right so some of these people are wicked and brothers if that was you that was wrong it was wrong if you were 15 and an 18 year old took your virginity it was wrong if your cousins and your play cousins all right took your virginity it was wrong it was wrong if your mother's boyfriend or your mother's girlfriend or whatever tried to take your virginity. It was wrong. It was wrong if your uncle and your granddaddy and whoever took your virginity, or even if you weren't a virgin, it was wrong that they assaulted you like that. It was wrong. And sisters, it's wrong if your mother's boyfriend, a, a spouse did it. It's wrong. It's wrong if when you trusted an adult and then they perverted your trust. It's wrong. It's wrong if you went to school and the school teacher perverted, was perverted. It wasn't you. You are an innocent child. And they'll say, well, why did you know, you know, don't sit on no man's lap. No, tell that don't sit on no man's lap. But what's wrong with that man? Why everybody know that that man is perverted and nobody's saying anything? Why is he still invited to the family barbecue and you know he's chested a molester? Why? 
Don't let your children be small sacrifices. Don't let your children be small sacrifices for your demonic covenant. Because a demonic covenant always requires a sacrifice. But if that happened to you, it was wrong. If you weren't protected, even outside of sexual abuse, if you weren't protected by your mother and father, God wants to put you back together again. You weren't born that way. When you get molested, when you get sexually abused, the spirits that are inside of that abuser can get transferred to you. It is a demonic transference of spirits. They take your innocence and impart demonic spirits inside of you. Whatever they're dealing with, you'll begin to deal with. And nobody, for some reason, ever talks about this with people who are homosexual or people who are promiscuous or even people who are in fornication. Nobody ever talks about the spiritual side of being sexually abused and what happens in that moment. Why are we talking about this? Why aren't you talking about this with your children? Why is nobody talking about this? Why are you acting as if it didn't happen when it did? You pretending doesn't make it go away. The spirit is still inside of you unless you've repented and unless you've been born again and unless it's been cast out of you. But we want to sit around and do fake and phony in church. No, you're wrestling with something. Why is nobody discerning why she's promiscuous? Why is nobody telling him that a spirit was introduced to him and that's why he thinks he was born this way? Why are we talking about these things? Why are, we, why are we talking about how the family protects the abusers and shuns and you better be quiet because you'll break up the family if you tell. I'll kill your family if you tell what I did to you. Why are we talking about it? Now you just have a bunch of people thinking they're born this way. No, spirits were introduced into you. And even if you weren't molested, it could have been from your mother's and grandmother's sins, your grandfather's. Oh, I wasn't molested. I'm still gay. It, it's, it's a variety of things that could have happened. I'm not, you know, I still sleep around. It's a variety of things. Do you understand me? So these narcissists know they need to have sex with you early on. Don't you know this is why the narcissists work so fast a lot of times? They know they need to love bomb your socks off. Because the narcissist doesn't know who they are. They just know how they operate. And, and then the narcissist takes on the identity of those around them. And then what happens is their victims then take on their demonic traits and the characteristics of Satan. This is why you have to go through ICU when you get out of the abuse because you have unclean spirits inside of you. Psychology won't heal that. That has to be confessed and repented of. And then you have people who are confused. So when you come out of these relationships and these situationships and these workplaces, you'll be confused when you come out of a narcissistic system. If you take on their identity, you will be confused. God has defined who you are, but when you don't know your identity, you come into agreement with Bathomith about who you are. You come into agreement with Belial about who you are, and you begin to say, I was born this way. I don't like men. I don't like women. You will not know your identity. And when you don't know your, your identity, you don't know your authority because true power and authority come from knowing your identity in Yeshua. Do you understand me? So Satan is transgender. Yes, he is. 
he's transgender. And the only way you can be transgender is if you take on the identity of Satan. Who am I talking to? Because God said, I made you in my image. So whose image are you walking in? Who are you in covenant with? It is tight, but it's right. Right, India? Satan is gay. Do you understand that? And the only reason why, way you could be gay is if you take on his identity. Satan is a fornicator an adulterer. And the only way you can be those things is if you take on his identity and his characteristics. So he gives you his identity. It's an identity. Remember that show Wife Swap? It's a swap. You trade your destiny and your identity for a piece of something, a piece of nothingness. It's like, who was it? Jacob and Esau, you've been tricked out of your identity by a trickster. You've been tricked out of a whole inheritance by a demonic clown. Satan gives you, he, he tells you, you know, just this just a little sex. This just a little, this just a little something. I need this. Oh, you know, and whatever, whatever lie you tell yourself. And you know the lie that you tell yourself because the lie was is what keeps you bound. The lie is what keeps you in that relationship. So Satan swaps, you, you come into agreement with every thought that comes into your head ain't yours. Every dream that comes into your mind isn't yours. Well, I dreamed that that was my husband. I dreamed that that was my wife. Every dream that, it, the dreams must be tested by the Holy Spirit. Every prophecy, you got people going around talking about every prophecy, every dream. I've seen people say that this person was my spouse and that person was married. And I'm like, sis, do you know what you're saying? And I just sit back like, how can she listen to me and be so deceived? Something ain't right. Something in the buttermilk ain't clean. You can't listen to me and study under me and think it's okay and think you have dreams about somebody else's man or woman. I'm like, how is she so deceived still? Something in the buttermilk ain't clean. You think God sent you somebody else's husband. And now you come into agreement and that narc is about to run you ragged. Do you understand me? God ain't sending you somebody. You better test a dream. You better test a prophecy. I don't care if it come from me. Who it comes from, you run it by God first. And what we do when we're so thirsty, we, we everybody love prophecy. Everybody loves prophecy. Everybody loves prophecy. Now everybody want to be a prophet until it's time to do what prophets do, which is deliver a rebuke. Get your money, get your house. 2023. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you talk about this strong word, oh, it get quiet in the comments. Man, get you thinking, don't it? Get you thinking and get you rocking back and forth, don't you? Don't it? Oh, this is tough. It's tough. It's a tough word. That's what the word of God does. The word of God, the Holy Spirit don't make you huck a buck. Religion will, though. The Holy Spirit will make you think. That's what people should correct right openly. Then they wouldn't be doing that foolishness. So Satan gives you his identity. You're not gay, but Satan is. You're not a lesbian, but Satan is. You're not transgender, but Satan is. You're not a fornicator, but Satan is. You're not an adulterer, but Satan is. You're not, as a believer, you're not anything that is in this world. You're supposed to come out. You're supposed to be discipled. We are supposed to be kings and queens and joint heirs to a throne. Why are we acting like demonic, animalized paupers? But when you have a spirit of Balao, your conscience is defiled and seared. Do you understand me? So that's why people will say, well, the narcissist going to heaven. And eh, first of all, that's, we all got to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. I don't worry about it for narcissists going to heaven. That ain't none of my business. That's God's business. 
I got to figure out if I'm, I got to make sure I'm on the right path. You worried about somebody else and their salvation and where they're going. I'm telling you, you ain't worried about yours in the right way. Because worrying about you is a full-time job. People that don't have no life, no business, worry about everybody else. Worry about yourself. Are you going to heaven? Am I going to heaven? But when these people are operating these spirits, their conscience, they are reprobate. Jezebel was a reprobate spirit. Can God do anything? Man, God is the I am that he is. That ain't no question. It's never a question of can God do something? Does that person want to be free? Does that person want to be free from that, from that identity crisis that they're having? Do they want to be free? From the tormented thoughts and people act like when you're living la vida loca, when it's pride and all this, they act like they're living the best time of their life. They don't tell you at night they are tormented. You don't have peace when you live outside of the will of God. I don't care how people try to act like they do. I don't believe people when they try to act like, oh yeah, I'm posting, I'm living my best life and you living outside of the will of God. I know you ain't living your best life because I know deep the demons that come with, with sin. Oh yeah, it's all good. You know, we shacking up, we living together and pity perfect, it's pity perfect. No, it ain't, no, it ain't, no, it ain't. Unless your conscience is seared against sin. And when you have a spirit of Balao, a spirit of Jezebel, if you, you know, God will give you time and space to repent. He'll, he'll allow situations, some situations that happen in our life, everything ain't the devil and everything ain't a demon. Some things are judgment. They don't like that, do we? Something is harvest time. When I realized that my life was bearing the fruit of the seeds that I had sown into the demonic realm, I had to sit with God and change where I sowed my seeds. I can no longer cast my pearls to swine and continue sowing into the kingdom of darkness because I reap that harvest. Some things are judgment in your life. And you don't like it. It don't feel good when the harvest come in. It don't feel good. But if you don't like it, you got to change where you sow. Do you understand me? You got to change it. But when, that's, when that conscience is seared, you'll do anything, anywhere, anytime. You'll lie, you'll cheat, you'll steal. You'll, do, you'll have fornication and sexual activity, and it will not bother your conscience. When you having a conscience is an underrated blessing. When I sin and when I mess up, I thank God that I have a conscience. I thank God for his righteous rebuke. I don't get uh, I'm mad at God. You know, I'm reaping the benefit. I'm reaping the harvest of the seeds. I'm so I'm mad at God. Why he, why? I, you know, I'll talk to a lot of people that be mad at God for what they doing in their own life. You mad at God for what you did? I be wanting to do like that. For what you did? Hmm. That's, that's a different, that's a, I, uh, that's a different form of delusion. That's a different, I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. Cause I know God gives free will. I know he gives me choices and I know I'm going to reap the consequences of my choices. This is where we live in. Uh, we live in a world where, where world, the world doesn't think there are any consequences to your sin. They don't think it's, they act like there's no repercussions to sin. That's the world we live in. Living la vida loca, where everything is good. Everything ain't good when you're in sin. You won't have peace. Thank you, Violet. God bless you. May God return that to you above measure. God bless you. All right. No. So if you're doing any, if you're living in sin and that sin is, and you don't feel convicted, you on a path to reprobation. Do you understand me? It's a good thing when you feel convicted when you sin. It's a good thing when you feel convicted when you gossip. It's a good thing when you feel convicted after sleeping with someone. It's a good thing when you feel convicted after you masturbate. It's a good thing. Repentance is still right. Do you understand me? That's right, lyricists. We must repent of our sins and let the Heavenly Father come in. Hallelujah. May God return it to you over and above measure. Yes, indeed. It's a good thing. It don't feel good 
but it's good for you. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? But when you sleep with these narcissists, you have UTIs. Look, condoms don't pr protect you. You know, the world tries to act like, oh, it's safe sex. It's, sa it's safe sex. No, it ain't safe. Safe sex is really, it ain't even between a man and a woman that's married. It's between a man and a woman that are kingdom spouses. Dare I say it? Because if your spouse is a narcissist, you still, you just, you swapping demons. Do you understand me? If they're not fighting against, if y'all are not fighting the good faith of fight, uh, you know what I mean? If y'all not fighting together on the same team and they're with, wrestling with these demons, it's still not safe sex. Do you understand me? It's it's really not. It's really not. Condoms don't protect protect you between uh, of, of sexually transmitted demons. They barely uh, protect you from sexually transmitted diseases. All right. So uh, so so hear what I'm saying. You have demonic soul ties, and that makes you enter into a demonic covenant. So if you're wrestling with spirit spouses and incubus and succubus and all of that, why? You got to get to the root of why. If you've been molested or, you know, incest or rape or rejection or you come under false religions or idolatry and polygamy. Some of these people have sex with dead people, uh, porn addictions, polygamy, uh, poly, polyamory. All right. Poly means many. You're worshiping many false gods. That's all it is. All right. The root word of, of poly means many, like polytheism is worshiping many gods. That's all you're doing. You're worshiping many false gods when you're in polyandry and poly polygamy and polytheism and all that. And then you wonder why marine spirits and siren spirits and incest and, and Molech and Baal and all these sex magic demons and all this duality and, and uh, man, it will... It can make your head spin. This is life with a narcissist. Do you understand me? More, uh, some more and some less, depending on where they are. All right. And then we got to examine. We got to examine how narcissists in our own trauma lead us into sin. You got to deal with that trauma trap so that narcissists can't come and sweep you off your feet. A narcissist is a salesman. They are salesmen. They are con artists. Now, when I go in to buy something, I look, I try to look at the psychology of that person because they know I'm here to buy something. So how are they going to sell it to me? And I know if they're a narcissistic person, I know the, t the, the uh, tactics that they're going to try. And that's what a narcissist does with you. A narcissist figures your profile out. We're here talking about the sexual profile of the narcissist. The narcissist has figured out your profile. Before the narcissist even comes in your DM, the narcissist studies your social media. The narcissist, uh, 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 when they talk to you, they examine you to see how they can slither in through your back door. Do you need a friend? Oh, the narcissist will pretend to be your friend. All the while they're plotting and they're being your friend of me. Yes, they are. A narcissist will figure out where your voids are and they will either become the victim or the hero to your circumstances. A narcissist just leads your wounded inner child right into the gutter. Their goal is to get you hooked on dopamine so you can have a soul tie in the realm of the spirit. A narcissist's goal is to have sex with you as soon as possible so they can then control you. Once you have sex with them, then they feel like they can and they bring you up under that spell. That's when the duality changes and you go from seeing Dr. Jekyll to seeing Mr. Mr. Hyde or Mr. Hyde to Dr. Jekyll, whichever way it was, you'll see a completely different person because now that narcissist knows that they got you and you ain't going nowhere because you, you idolize them so much because you made them your God. All right. And that's what they are counting on. They're counting on you never realizing who you are. They're counting on you never realizing your identity in Christ. They're counting on you and your trauma to keep you bound. They're counting on that demonic soul tie to lead you right into the pits of hell. They're counting on that soul tie to keep you doing tricks, uh, silly rabbit tricks for kids. They're counting on you to your trauma to keep leading you into a burning bed. They're counting on you and your trauma to lead you into idolatry, into polyamorous relationships, into sin, into divination, into witchcraft. And then when they got you on 
on one level, it has to keep escalating because with the with the narcissist, with the Jezebel, with any demonic spirit, you have to keep up in the ante. And what you did at the beginning of the relationship, now you gotta turn tricks. Now you gotta swing from the chandeliers. Now you gotta invite somebody in. Now you gotta do this. Now we gotta go swing. Now we gotta go do this. Now we gotta invite somebody in. Now we gotta invite two people in. Now we gotta invite four people in. Now we gotta have a whole orgy. This is what they do because demons have an insatiable appetite. Come out of the gutter, girl. Come out of the gutter. Come out of the gutter. Come out of the gutter, brother. Come out of the gutter. You cannot pamper and pacify your pain points with people. That's for somebody. You cannot pamper and pacify your pain points with people. You cannot leave. You cannot do that. Do you understand me? You got to come out of people pleasing. You got to come out of thinking that you need people more than you need God. Do you understand me? All right. You, you can't do it. You can't do it. All right. Let's talk about Sodom and Gomorrah quickly, quickly. All right. Genesis 18, 16 and 33. When God revealed his plan to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah due to the wickedness of those cities, Abraham asked God to spare the people. In fact, Abraham engaged in a lengthy conversation to mediate for the cities. I saw this somewhere. Okay, now it goes into the scripture. When the men got up to leave, they looked down. Some of you need to study Sodom and Gomorrah. Study Sodom and Gomorrah. You need to know that. All right. They looked down towards Sodom and Abraham walked along with them to see them on their way. Then the Lord said, shall I hide Abraham from what I'm about to do? God's about to do some things. All right. Burn, baby, burn. God is about to do some things. Do you understand me? Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation. Mm, some of you got to leave your kinsmen so you can become a great and powerful nation. So you can speak boldly as God has called you to speak. All right. Uh, but if Abraham never left his kinsmen, he wouldn't be blessed. Do you understand me? All nations on earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he, he has promised to him. Then the Lord said the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin is so grievous. That will go down. Hey, Dana, God bless you. That I will go down and see if, if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. Don't you know the sin cries up to, from the ground? The blood cries out. The blood of abortion. The blood of sin cries out from the ground. It reaches the heavens. Do you understand me? And God is not going to put up with that for far too long. All right, verse 22, then the men turned away and went towards Sodom, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. And Abraham approached him and said, will you sweep away? I love this, what Abraham did. Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare for the place of the sake of 50 righteous people in it? Far be it for you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. Hallelujah. Will you not judge all of the earth do right? The Lord said, if I find 50 righteous people, Abraham, in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for your sake, for their sake. Then Abraham spoke up again. He said, now... The God that I've been so bold as to speak through the Lord, nothing, but I am nothing but dust and ashes. What if the number of righteous is less than 50, God? Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five people? God said, if I find 45 people there, I will not destroy it. And once again, Abraham spoke to him. God, what if I find 40 people? What if I find 40 righteous people? And God said, for the sake of the 40, I will not do it. Then he said, may the Lord not be angry, but let me speak. Let me speak again, Lord. What if I can find 30 righteous people in Sodom? Will you destroy it? And God said, I will not do it if I find 40 righteous people. Oh, this is good to my spirit. And Abraham said, now I've been so bold as to speak to the Lord. What if I can find 20 
Oh, what if I can find 20, Lord? And he said, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, may the Lord not be angry. God, don't be angry with me, but I'm coming back again. God, let me just speak one more time. What if I only find 10 people in Sodom? And he answered, for the sake of the 10, I will not destroy it. When the Lord finished speaking with Abraham, he left and Abraham returned home. Don't you see? This is a power of intercessors. Do you understand me? This is the power of prayer warriors. This is the power of a prophetic nation. This is a, a power of evangelists and teachers and preachers in the fivefold ministry on post. This is the power of prayer. Do you understand me? When we can go to God as a righteous because God says the fervent effectual prayers of the righteous avail as much. Your prayers have power when you stand in righteousness. See, Satan knows because he's an accuser of the brethren. See, when you're walking in sin, he knows that taints your testimony. When you're walking in sin and fornication and homosexuality you don't have the power and authority like you should have you understand me righteousness is a weapon righteousness is a weapon when you put on the breastplate of the, the helmet of salvation the breastplate of righteousness you are putting on a weapon because when you are righteous the gates of hell cannot prevail against you in righteousness the gates of hell god will make if you make god your refuge god says i will be your strong tower I will protect you. I will not fall. A thousand may fall on your left, 10,000 on your right, but it shall not come near your dwelling. Righteousness is a weapon. When you live in sin, it takes your armor. Who am I talking to? You think this is fun and games? When you live in sin, it takes your armor. You'll be walking around here. You ain't bulletproof. Look, witchcraft arrows will touch you. When you walk in righteousness, the only thing that can get in is what God allows it. And God will allow that thing to work even for your good when you walk in righteousness. And then Genesis 19 records two angels disguised. This is how disgusting these people were. Disguised as human men visiting Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot met two angels in the city square and urged them to stay at his house. The angels agreed. All right, before they gone to bed, all the men from every part, look at how wicked this place was. This is Genesis 19, 4 and 5. Meet me there. They called to Lot and said, where are the men who came with you tonight? Bring them out to us so we can have sex with them. Do you understand me? The men in this town, both young and old, can they saw that two men men came in, two angels, two men came in, and the men said, bring the men out so we can have sex with them. The Bible is the best reality TV show you could have, book you could ever read. Do you ever hear me? If you're looking for drama, if you're looking for sex, if you ain't got to watch no show, it's all in the book. All right, bring them out to us so we can have sex with them. The angels then proceeded to blind the men surrounding the house and urge Lot and his family to flee from the cities to escape the wrath that God was about to deliver. Lot and his family flee the city. And then the Lord rained down, rained down fire, rained down sulfur on God, Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of heavens. Thus he overthrow those cities and entire plain, including all those living in the cities. Oh God, so you see how Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. Do you understand? Some people try to say it wasn't, it wasn't destroyed because of homosexuality. It was destroyed because of homosexuality, because of sin. And do you understand me? The men of Sodom and Gomorrah wanted to, wanted to gang rape these demons, these angels. Do you understand this? This is what this world is coming to, where it will be okay to have sex with children, where it will be okay to do these things to men and women. Do you understand me? All right. And in Ezekiel uh, 16, 49 and 50, now this was the sin of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters were arrogant, overfed and under and unconcerned. They did not help the poor and needy. They were haughty and detestable and did things before me. Oh, Jesus. Uh, it said they uh, did abominations. Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. This nation, this world has given itself up to sexual immorality and perversion. Thank you, Mel. God bless you. 
So homosexuality wasn't the only sin, but we can see it played a big part in the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. They wanted to pervert their innocence. That's what a narcissist does. A narcissist always wants to pervert your, your innocence. So when I see people, I remember this, this, I don't know what she was. She was whatever she was. And I remember her saying, shit, and you know, you so, you so this, you know, you so. What she was saying was my 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 lack of compromise made her feel uncomfortable. When I'm around you, no, your demons ain't gonna be comfortable around me, witch. Your demons ain't gonna be comfortable around me, fornicator and adulterer. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. And I'm not judging you. The word will judge you. The word will judge you. Do you understand me? The word should convict you. So Sodom and Gomorrah were definitely guilty of all kinds of sins. But homosexuality was a reason why God poured down sulfur on the cities. So when you're coming into agreement with pride this and fornication this and sexual immorality this, you better recognize who you're coming against. You better make sure you're on the right side of heaven while you're trying to support people because of your feelings and your relationship. You better make sure you're on the right side of your God if he is your God. If God God is indeed your God. You stand for righteousness no matter who stands against you. I stand for righteousness whether you like me or not. I stand for righteousness no matter who comes before me. If I left my whole family, what makes you think that I care about your views and likes? Wrong girl. You better stand for righteousness. You better stand for righteousness no matter who, who stands with you. Because if God be for you, who can be against you? Do you understand me? I don't care about my feelings. This ain't about my feelings. This is about my faith. This is about my God. This is about bringing glory to my God. This is about making sure captives get set free. That more people, because this world is about to burn. And if you don't come out of Sodom and Gomorrah, if you don't come out of Babylon, you're going to perish alongside with it. If you don't come out of these demonic covenants, you're going to perish alongside that narcissist. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You better come out of it. God bless you, talk taboo. God bless you. May God return that to you over and above measure. Hallelujah. So judgment is coming. Judgment is coming. America, the United States is going to be judged. All right, your country, wherever you live is going to be judged. And people will say, well, only God can judge me singing the Tupac National Sinner's Anthem. Do you understand what that means? We will all stand before him and give an account what we did in this lifetime. He will examine our choices. He will discern our hearts and see how we use the gifts and talents that he gave us. You will not be able to say, well, the church didn't teach me. You will Will not be able to say, well, they didn't do this. Well, you won't be able to say, well, my mom and daddy didn't teach me because God said the Holy Spirit is the best teacher and the best counselor. You won't be able to say, well, I didn't forgive them because they hurt me. You won't be able to say, well, I didn't use the gifts to glorify you because I was traumatized. You won't be able to say, but well, a narcissist touched me and now I'm going to live contrary to your image. You won't be able to say that when you stand before the most high. Judgment is coming. The blood of this country cries out when you're standing and, and, and getting in line with Jamal Bryant. All right, haven't you? Don't you know? Don't you know by now? Don't you know what a wolf looks like by now? Don't you know? Don't you know? Don't you know you want to be in the who's who of so so bad you won't stand up for what's right. They are trying to tell you that abortion is right and you're standing in your rally and you're protesting. You better know what who you're getting in alignment with. The blood of this country cries out. The blood these sacrifices to Molech are crying out. What you do in the dark will come to the light. So we have the power to intercede. But where are the watchmen? Where are the watchmen? Huh? Hey, uh, Symphony, God bless you. Where are the watchmen? Where are the watchmen? Where are the watchmen? Where are the watchmen? 
Where are the watchmen? Where are the intercessors? We have the power to intercede. We have the power to transform nations. But if you're in bed with Babylon, your authority and your identity will be confused and confounded and discombobulated. You'll be like the people in the, the Tower of Babel. You won't know who you are. Do you understand me? I've been reading about Lot's wife all week, reminding him he uh, snatched me out before I was consumed. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you for that, sis. God bless you. And may God return that to you over and above measure. Right. And like Lot's, Lot's wife, we cannot look back. People are looking back, crying over the narcissist. Man, stop crying over what he delivered you from. Cry for a season and get up. Cry. It was a blessing in disguise. It was a blessing in disguise. It was a blessing in disguise for me to be pulled out of my family. It was a blessing in disguise. I ain't going back. What I'm looking back for, because it's a holiday. The devil is a lie. I ain't about my feelings. I'm a warrior. Do you understand me? Oh, because it's, uh, it's the holidays. I feel like, man, bye. Kiss you in them holidays. Goodbye. All right. In the end, Sodom and Yahweh destroys Sodom and Gomorrah and Babylon is going to fall too. You must come out of her unless you take in her plagues. Do you understand that? All oh, that, well, I'm under grace and I'm once saved, always say the devil is a lie. Yes, we are under grace, but you don't abuse grace. Do you understand me? It comes a point in time where you got to knock if you buck. You got to walk like, you got to walk it and talk this walk. You got to endure until the end. All right, there comes a time. Don't be like Lot's wife looking back to the past. Holding on to the past will turn you into a pillar of salt. Looking back to the past, God says no one that puts his hand to the past. If you keep looking back, you're not fit for the kingdom. Are you fit for the fight? Are you fit for the fight? Are you fit for the fight, wounded warrior? Are you fit for the fight? Hallelujah. If not, you'll be stagnant. You'll be stagnant. You'll be stagnant. And this is the unfortunate truth. Some will not be saved because they cannot leave their kindred. They cannot leave their home. They cannot leave where God is telling them to go. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So they've been warned. They've been warned to get out of these demonic covenants. They've been warned to get out of these demonic unions. They've been warned to get out of these demonic uh, organizations. They've been warned to get up out of new age and divination. They've been warned to come out of wizardry and, and witchcraft and warlocks. They've been warned. These people are witches and warlocks pretending to be believers. They've been warned. So when you see judgment, don't you cupcake Christians say nothing. If you didn't warn, don't you sit there and say nothing because I see when people rebuke these, these wolves and then the cupcake so-called Christians getting mad. No, God has given them space and, and time to repent and they repent and not. So some people will not come out of that demonic covenant and they will pay the price with their life spiritually or physically. Either way, you're going to pay. Do you understand me? To God be all the glory. Where are the watchmen? Where are the watchmen? I'm on my post, Danielle. I know you are. I'm on my post too. I'm on, not on my watch. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. I'm on my post. In the military, we used to have what we call fire guard. Oh, that's good, God. Well, if we used to have fire guard, and then in the, in the, every every hour there was a different guard, and you had to roam the building to make sure that no fire, that no theft, that nothing crept into the building. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. We're trying to pull some people out of the burning house. We're trying to pull some people out of the burning field building. Who's on? fire guard duty today who's on guard duty today i'm on my post are you on your post hallelujah i'm on my post thank you fruit inspector god bless you and may god return that back to you over and above measure so how do you get out of this you got to examine your sexual history examine your history examine your life is there somewhere that you came into agreement is there a sexual soul tie that is keeping you bound clean up your life examine your history all right clean up your life you got to examine your secrets secrets keep you bound 
See, people, the word of God says in Proverbs 28 and 13, he who confesses his sins does not prosper. Some of you are holding on to secrets. Somebody molested you. Somebody raped you. Somebody abused you. And you were told to keep it quiet because if you talk, you're going to mess up the family. You're going to mess up the family's image. You got to, you know, if you say something, you know, uh, you know, that person's going to get you. If you do the, all kind of reasons that you were told to shut up, oh, it's going to be shame on you. Oh, you were wearing the wrong pants you were wearing the wrong skirt why did you have on makeup why was your hair like that well you see you shouldn't entice the men all kind of stupidity all right Balau is Balau. bell is bell do you understand me perversion is perversion no matter how short your skirt is do you understand me all right so you aren't the reason they did those things but you gotta understand if you don't confess those things they will hold you back do you understand me god bless you sheila and may god return that to you over and above measure so what secrets are holding you back the bible says that we overcome by the blood and the sharing of our testimony if you were sexually abused if you were raped if you were molested if incest happened if abuse would happen to you god is going to judge that if you are mad at god i want you to understand god loves you god god is not mad at you do you understand that he wants you to come to him the potter wants to put you back together again the potter wants to put you back together again you who are broken stop by the turns house give him the fragments of your broken life my friend the potter wants to put you back together again Oh, the potter wants to put you back together again. You have a potter who wants to put you back together again. God is going to judge them. They may get away and it may seem like they're getting away in this natural world, but in the spiritual world, God is going to judge. He's going to judge us. So that's why we need to pull. We need to make sure that we seek an intercessor. We need to make sure that our sins, because we hurt people too, right? So we need to make sure that our sins are under the blood. We need to forgive because we want to be forgiven. I know this modern day world, especially in the narcissist abuse community, they have a thing with forgiveness. They don't want you to forgive. If you are a biblical, if you are a believer, you need to forgive. And forgiveness does not mean that you reconcile that relationship. Let's say that. If God has called you out, look, look, don't let anybody put you back in. You move according to the Holy Spirit. You move according to the Holy Spirit. Do you understand me? But my heart goes out to you. If you were rejected, if your parents didn't project you, protect you, if you were abandoned, if you were told you were ugly, if you were told that you were stupid, if you were told that you were not enough, if you were made to feel that you were not enough, if you were made to feel like you couldn't get right, I'm here to tell you there's a God that wants to put you back together again. And those are all lies. If you were told that you were born this way, if you came into agreement with Satan's plan, if you don't know your identity, if you've been abused and misused and treaded down upon, if you've been lied on and smear a smear campaign against you, if your children have turned against you, if your parents have turned against you, if your loved ones have turned against you, if at work they don't like you, I'm here to tell you my heart goes out to you. All right. Emotional abuse, psychological abuse, narcissist abuse is not easy. All right. If you were abused and traumatized, they tried to take your innocence. Don't seek vengeance. Justice, yes, vengeance, no. All right? And even if this seems to get off here, God is going to deal with them. Ju God is the great judge. He judges all. And understand, these people are tormented. That's right. Thank you, y'all, for pulling me out of that burning building. The burn, baby, burn. The building is about to come down. I'm here to tell you. All right. So anyone that has to fulfill themselves with sex is an unfulfilled person. Do you understand me? If you are a person and you feel like you need to use sex to get people to like you, you need to use sex because that's what you equate with love. God wants to show you what love really is. That's not love. 
You don't have to perform. You don't have to shuck and jive. You don't have to dance to this world's tune. You don't have to, you don't have to doll it up. You don't have to dress it down. God just loves you. But he loves you. He sent a savior. He sent a redeemer because he knew that we could not do that on our own. You, you can try to follow 613 laws. You're going to fail because the flesh, the flesh can't do that. So God had to send us a redeemer. He had to send us Yeshua HaMashiach. And those voids can only be filled by the most high. What secrets are you hiding? Let's face it on today. Confess it out of your mouth. Confess it out of your mouth. What sins are you hiding? What did they do to you? Let it come up. Let face it. Face it. Face it so that you can heal from it. Confess that thing so that you can heal from it. And then you got to understand, no man can serve two masters. You will hate one and love the other. If you are a believer in this day and time, you must walk in obedience. Don't you know it, the, 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 the trumpet is going to sound and every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Every Satan is going to confess. Every every uh, Luciferian is going to confess. Every new age, every witch, every warlock is going to confess that Yeshua HaMashiach is Christ. Do you understand me? Every system, every Illuminati system, every Jezebelic system, all these people that think they are in power, that of this world, this world's beast system is going to fall and no man can serve two masters. Allow God to be Jehovah Jireh. Living outside of the will of God brings curses and damnation upon you and your children. Is the sex worth a curse? Is the sex worth a curse? Is the sex worth a soul tie? Is the sex worth a spirit spouse? Do you understand me? Is the sex worth it? For those of you who think you can't live without sex, is the sex worth a demonic soul tie? And ain't no, ain't no sex that good. In, ain't no sex that good. Do you understand me? Ain't no sex that good. That brings an ungodly soul tie. Ain't that much love making? Ain't that much sex in the world? I I'm here to tell you, it ain't that good. Ain't, ain't that much sex. Ain't, ain't that much good sex. Ain't no good uh, penis. Ain't no good. Ain't that good a vagina. Um, to, to mm -mm. especially when I was single. Look, when God showed me, I abstained until me until me and Solomon's wedding night. I'm here to tell you. All right, was it easy? No. No, I ain't gonna sit here and lie to you. I ain't gonna sit here and lie to you. No, you gotta crucify that flesh. Do you understand me? That's it's the only way. It's first Corinthians 6 uh, 9 through 10. Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, those in love with this world, no male prostitutes, no homosexual offenders, this is NIV versions, nor thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkards, no slanderers, no swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. I don't care how many of your and man, when I see, I don't care how many of your pastors are in Alpha, Alpha, Psi, Alpha, Alpha, whatever, Q, Omega. I don't care. I don't care how many of your pastors are in Greek organizations. I don't care how many of your pastors and your and, and you see this world that are in the black boule. I don't care how many people you see that are in these organizations. They will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. The path is narrow. I don't care how many of the people in this world are acting like, you know, to, to, to you know, just do what thou wills. You know, the, the Aleister Crawley theme. I don't care how many people in this world try to act like it's okay to follow Bathman. I don't care how many of these people in this world try to act like it's okay to follow Baal. I don't care how many of these people have made pacts with the devil. I don't care how many people are homosexualities or homosexuals and fornicators and adulterers and swindlers. I don't care how many people they will not inherit the kingdom of God. You got to come out. You got to come out of the satanic system. You got to come out of you got to come out of it. It's not worth it, is it? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. So you got to understand that righteousness is a weapon. You got to confess it. Some of you don't want to go, go back. You got to go back. You don't, you don't go, you don't live there, but you got to go back to your past so that you can overcome and get to your future. Do you understand me? Now you gotta understand that righteousness is a weapon. You cannot fight an enemy or a demon that you are in agreement with. 
That's why when somebody want to stay with a narcissist, up there, email me and ask, well, I want to stay with the narcissist. Why are you emailing me for? This is a deliverance ministry. What you emailing me for, sis? Come back when you come out of agreement. When you come out of agreement, or unless your narcissist wants to submit and follow Yeshua, then we can talk. Until then, we don't have anything to talk about because we don't talk the same. We're not walking the same path. Said, how can two walk except they agree? One of us going to have to submit, and it ain't going to be me submitting to your Jezebel. Do you understand me? So you cannot fight an enemy. And if somebody wants to stay there, you let them stay there until God gives them a revelation. If you are in agreement with homosexuality or fornication or adultery, you are in agreement and covenant with the kingdom of darkness. You have to be led by the Holy Spirit. You have to examine your life and your lifestyle. Is it going to be easy? No. Who said that? I know when now, because we don't disciple people, people just say the sinner's prayer and they feel and they spin around three times at the altar and then they go live in however they want to live. And they go home with the same demons that they came into the church with. No, you got to be disciple. You got to examine your lifestyle. You got to examine your life. You will not inherit the kingdom of heaven if you are doing those things. I don't care how many celebrities, how many corporations embrace your lifestyle and embrace alternative lifestyles. Y'all does not have a VIP and a social media influencer section in heaven. Do you understand me? He don't care how many followers you have. He don't care how many subscribers you have. He don't care how many, how popular you are in this world. He don't care how, how many fashions and designer clothes you have. He don't care if you got Balenciaga, Fendi, Gucci, Lindy, uh, Fendi Prada. He don't care about none of that. Do you understand me? You can have, you can influence people to hell and you'll end up there too. All right. And y'all didn't place you there. People, oh, well, I got send you to hell, send you to hell. He didn't send you there. He won't send you there. You'll send your own choices. That's right. If the world is accepting you. You ain't right with God. You for real. For real. All right. People wake up every day and make choices that are contrary to God's word that put enmity between them and Jehovah and then have the nerve and audacity to be mad at him. You wake up every day and choose violence, choose sexual immorality. And then some people think they follow religion. Religion, reli a religious person is just as bad. Do you understand me? They think that they can be saved by their head wraps and all that kind of thing. That ain't going to save you either. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Ruach HaKodesh. It's the blood of Yeshua. Do you understand me? All right. But God lays it out. He laid it out in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28, what curses were going to come up on you. And he laid it out, what blessings will come up on you if you do right. All right. He lays it out. He says, choose life, choose salvation. Yes, that means that you will have to give up things in this world, but you are made in God's image. You were made in the image of Jehovah. All right. And God said, let us make man in our image in our after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing upon the earth. So God created man in his image. And in the image, God created him in male and female. He created them. He didn't create trans. He didn't create transgender. He didn't create people to be trans age. He didn't create people to be bisexual. He didn't create people to be trisexual. He didn't create people like that. If you're like that, then you are following in the image of Bathomus. You are you are in the image of Satan. And you have come into agreement with who Satan says you are. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? Do you hear what I'm saying? All things are lawful unto me, but not all things are expedient. All things are lawful unto me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly and meats for the and belly for the meats, and God shall destroy them, destroy them both. Now it, the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God had both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Know ye, do you know not that you are members of Christ? Your body, my body, my way, my body, my this. It ain't your body. It ain't yours if you're a believer. 
It's yours if you're of this world. But if you are a vessel of God, you are a carrier of God's glory. You are a glory carrier. I right? shall then I not take members of Christ and make them members of a harlot. God forbid. You're not supposed to be a whore. You're not supposed to be worshiping Meg the Stallion. What should, you ain't supposed to be listening to that. Clean up your life. Clean up your music list. All right. Clean it up. Do you know that which he is joined to a harlot is one body for two, he says, shall be one flesh. He that is joined unto the Lord is one in the spirit. Flee fornication, every sin that a man does, does without the body. But he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. What you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is inside of you, which ye have a God. You are not your own. You have been blood bought with a price. Therefore, therefore, glorify your God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. We are to take on the character of Yahweh, of the great I am, of Jehovah. Satan is transgender. Satan is gay. And he is gay for pay. He is back. I mean, he is all those things. You are not those things. You are not supposed to be those things if you are a believer. If you are a believer, right? They want to keep their falsehood covenant and keep calling for deliverance, right? Right. Some people, they just, they want to be free from their demons, but they don't want, I always say it's one thing to get delivered. It's another thing to maintain the deliverance. Some people want their, they want to be free from the torment. They don't want to live the lifestyle. That's right. All right. So you are supposed to take on the identity of the great I am. Sinners said with Yeshua, but sinners were changed. Sinners are supposed to be changed. You're supposed to come in here and hear the word and be convicted. You're supposed to hear the word. All right. We're not supposed to sit with the world. I don't sit with the world. What do me and the world got to talk about? Because if I sit in the world, I'm going to talk about God. Don't talk to me if you don't want me to talk about God and it's not done in a religious way. I just know what he saved me from and I know that I've been blood bought with a price. All right? When people are around you, are you are you a, are you a, a, a Christian that hides? Are you a, a Christ follower? Are you a follower of Yeshua that hides who you are? If you deny him in front of people, he'll deny you on judgment day. Keep trying to be a closet uh, believer. Keep trying to be a closet believer because you don't want nobody to know. You don't want people to know. No, you're going to know who I follow because this world is going to come a time where you won't be able to hide. You're going to have to make a choice. And if you're a lukewarm, God says he will spew you out, you closet, quiet, cupcake Christians. He will spew you out of your mouth. He will spew you out. How can you be quiet? You're supposed to confess. Remember, Jesus would heal somebody and he would tell them, don't tell nobody. And before you know it, they didn't told the whole town. Why am I going to be quiet about my salvation? Why am I going to be quiet about a, about a man who set me free? No, I'm going to tell everybody. The more God brings influence to me, I'm going to tell it on the internet. I'm going to tell it in my house. I'm going to tell it on the streets because I met a man who saved me from somebody in my family who are trying to kill me why am i gonna be quiet about my god why am i gonna be a quiet closet christian no i'm a i'm a believer no i ain't lukewarm because he said he'll spew you out you closet cupcake christians he gonna spew you right on out because there's gonna come a time when you won't be able to hide anymore you won't be able to hide anymore you won't be able to hide anymore you won't be able to hide behind your titles you won't be able to hide behind your corporations you won't be able to hide behind your degree you won't be able to hide behind your fraternity and sorority. You won't be able to hide behind your divination. You won't be able to hide anymore. You won't be able to hide anymore. And if you're not with us, you're not with us. Do you understand me? But the blood is supposed to change us. We're supposed to be born again. Whatever you identify yourself with is no longer supposed to be valid once you're born again. Once you're born again. And you must be born again to walk this walk. Do you understand me? We are new creatures in Christ. All right, you cannot be healed of something if you think that's your identity. How can you be healed from abuse if you think that that's your identity? How can you be healed from sexual trauma if now you've made your trauma your identity? 
And that's what this world has done. This world has taken it and psychology has babied you and coddled you and made you to come into agreement with your trauma. And now that's how you're identified in this world by your trauma. And now there's been a demonic identity exchange. You've traded in your identity. No, no. So if you traded your identity, now is the time to snatch your inheritance back. Now is the time where God's thoughts are supposed to be your thoughts. You remember, this is about covenants, agreements, altars. You got to be a Josiah in the spirit and tear down those altars. Those altars have been resurrected. When you see it, you are resurrecting demonic altars. You are putting a blood sacrifice on an altar. When you fornicate, you are making making a sin offering to your God. When you have an abortion, you are making a sin offering to the gods of Molech. All right. When you have fornication, you are making a sin offering to Satan, to Bilal, to Bathomith. You are making a sin God. When you have sex with a narcissist, you are making a sin offering to Jezebel. As an Ahab, you are making a sin offering to that person. All right. So you have to remember, this is about covenants, agreements, and altars. All right. And then remember, your mind is so powerful. All right. You got to be careful of the things that you watch. Your subconscious mind, God made us like he made us for a reason. Reason. What's in your subconscious? Does your subconscious need an oil change? Because the devil is a liar and he'll try to talk you out of your identity. All right. So he'll try to get things in your mind. And if you don't cast it down, next thing you know, now you come into agreement with that thought. Do you understand me? But you best believe that Yahweh is watching over this sinful nation. He's in it. He's not pleased with this, with this, what, what he sees. Do you understand me? He's not pleased with this world and this pride and this lust and this fornication and this shacking up. He's not pleased with it. He's not pleased with it. All right. So you got to decide, like Jeremiah said, you got to consecrate your life, consecrate your life. God promises to watch over us. All right. I, I was going to talk about the almond tree. I'll talk about that in another message. All right. But the almond tree signifies that God is watching over a nation. All right. God is watching over and he's going to judge this nation. All right. And he promises to watch over us for our good, even in our weaknesses and our and our and our shortcomings. His eyes are always on us. The spirit gives life. The Holy Spirit gives life to us uh, uh, and helps us to obey the law. The law cannot make us righteous. So when people are Hebrew Israelites, you can't follow 613 laws. God don't care about your skin color. Yes, we know who we are. We know we were God's original uh, uh, chosen people, but we cannot rest there. The law cannot make you righteous. I don't care how many head wraps you have and how dry face you are. The law will not make you righteous because our flesh is too weak to keep the law. All flesh, all of our flesh, all of our, all of us have fallen short and, and come up uh, short. Do you understand? me? We have all fallen short. But what the law cannot do, the Holy Spirit enables us to do. The Holy, Sp Holy Spirit provides us righteousness. Do you understand me? And, and, and uh, through the blood of Jesus, our sins are defeated. All right. So pray for your future spouses. Pray for your children's spouses. Pray for your children to go into godly unions and have godly friends. Pray for this nation. Pray for yourself. Pray for the soul ties. Pray for pray. Pray without ceasing. And then when you're dating, you must know who and what you are marrying and dating. It's no more dating because somebody looks good. Yes, God will give you the desires of your heart, but what's in their bloodline? That's what you need to be determining. Set a term determining if y'all going to look good on the gram for the gram to, to, to take vacations with. No, what's in their bloodline? Because that's what's going to raise your kids. Her 36, 24, 36 ain't going to raise your kids. Her mind and what's in her spirit is what's going to raise your children. And then whether you have children or not, her, you are going to be dealing with that. And if you marry a Jezebel, you'll be marrying a cantankerous woman. And God says it's better for a man to live on a rooftop than live in a house with a cantankerous woman. Do you understand me? So you can't be more worried about sex and chemistry. 
Who are they? What are they into? Do they serve God? Not this. Oh, I go to church. I was raised in the church. And we, where's my buzzer? We, we passed that boo. We passed that about five, 10 years ago. Cause a lot of demons go to church. Jezebels are all up in the four wall church. So it ain't, no, you go to church. No, devils go to church every Sunday. Who are they when nobody else is watching? Who do they serve? What do they listen to? Who are they under? Do you understand me? You got to be asking some real questions. What happened to you? What's going on in your life? You need to ask some real questions. Then you bind divorce. You bind uh, ungodly marriages in your life. You bind the counterfeit spirit. Do you understand me? And then understand uh, if you're walking in, in an alternative lifestyle, what if you were not born that way? What if? What if you could be made over? What if you could crucify that flesh? What if there's a better way? What if you want to be free? Do you want to be free truly? There's life in Christ and there's life more abundantly. Do you understand me? I don't know what you're talking about. You about to get put up out of here. Say something else crazy. You're going to get put up out of here. All right. There's hope if you have an aversion to children or animals or the same sex, or if you are sex crazed, all right? If you are molested, if you are abused, if you are traumatized, you can come out of that, all right? It's not gonna be easy, but there's hope. Narcissists are not, people deal with these things. Do you understand me? And we gotta be able to talk about the, these things. So if you are dealing with these things, and it is giving you a proclivity towards children or, a pro, or, or propensity, all right, to masturbate, a propensity to form is help for that. Do you understand me? There's hope, all right? Narcissists are not, people deal with these things. Confess it. Don't try to hide it. You need deliverance. And understand that you're not the only one. Deal with it so you can heal from it. Get to the root. How did this enter? How did this spirit of anger enter? How did this spirit of, of homosexuality enter? You were not born that way. How did the spirit of fornication and adultery enter? Was your mother or father an adulterer? Do you understand me? What is the source? If you sit down in, in, in ICU and in CBU, you'll get to the root of something. But people cannot pacify your pain points. You cannot use people to pacify your pain, to numb the pain. Then you'll go into alcoholism and addictions and narcissists and addictions go hand in hand. When you find narcissists, you'll usually find strange fetishes and you'll find addictions. Narcissists have addictive personalities, all right? They're called demons. They're called unclean spirits. Do you understand me? So you got to get to the root of those things. So I love you enough to tell you the truth. I love you enough to tell you the hard truth about these things. If I'm wrong, what does it cost me? If I'm wrong about what I'm telling you, yes, God is going to get me. And I don't play with God. I don't play with God. Okay. I repent. If I said anything in error, if I said anything wrong, I repent. But if you are wrong, about homosexuality, about fornication, about adultery. What does it cost you? What does it cost you? It may cost you your salvation. All right. I'm just the messenger. I'm just the messenger. All right. So God's word says, we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the father, that we may too live a new life. Since we live by the spirit, let us keep in step with the spirit. That's why right, never. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on flesh desires, but those who live accordance with the spirits have their, with the spirit, have their minds set on what the spirit desires. The mind governed by flesh is death. That's Romans 8. That's New Testament. But the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. The old me died. I always tell you that, right? The old me died in 2016. 
But Christ, when I die, I die to myself. I die to my desires, all right, to my, to my fleshly desires. And now Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He bore our sins in his body on the Christ so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. I'm go ahead and block you. Yeah. All right. And live for righteousness. By his wounds, we have been healed. Okay. So if you want to come out of agreement with those things, you say we over, remember, we overcome by the blood and the sharing of our testimony. And you say you repent, you examine your life. You consecrate your life. You anoint your life. All right. You anoint your head, anoint your, anoint your body, anoint your children, anoint your doorpost in your house. And you say, I repent. I repent for all of my sins made by commission and omission. I repent against homosexuality, fornication. I repent against adultery. I repent for idolatry. I repent for sexual immorality. I renounce it. I repent for coming into agreement with this world. I renounce every soul tied with Bilal, Beelzebub, Bathamith, Lucifer, Satan. I come into y'all's plans and purposes for my life. I release and forgive those who hurt me. I release them to Yahweh. I want to be made whole. I want to be free. I believe God when he says, when he, when he made me who I am. I believe his will and his way and his, I, his, my God given identity. Not this world's identity, not Satan's identity. And if y'all be for you, who can be against you? I come into agreement with God's image, with Jehovah's images. I am made in his image. So whether you were molested, whether you were raped, whether you were traumatized, whether you were abused, whatever the case is, God wants to set you free from that. Do you understand me? All right. So before we go, before we go, I hope you enjoyed this message. I know it was some hard hitting truths. Okay. All right, we're going to take communion for those who want to take communion. All right, thank you, Stephanie. Judgment uh, does start with pulpit, but uh, Shin, I really feel and believe you on a narrow path. Hallelujah. I try to be. Yes, indeed, you are teaching. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Yes, he does. Every Sunday. Every Sunday. All right, you have spoken nothing but the truth, my sister. God bless you, Christine. Amen. So I'm going to give you time if you if you have your... um your communion, all right? And when the hour had come, um, and before you take communion, you repent, all right? Um, you focus on your shoe and what the sin and the sins that he bore. Man, you should, you should, we should be walking around with gratitude, right? Like Christ, a sinless man bore your sins, all of this world's sins. And those who want to uh, accept his, his gift, and his atonement for our sins and live a righteous life and endure to the end by the power of the Ruach Kodesh. Those were the ones that will be free. All right. And then you have a heart of gratitude and thankfulness. All right. You thank him for your salvation and you think about what the bread and the body and the wine means to you. Okay. And when the hour had come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. And then he said, with fervent desire, I had desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is, it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup. He took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it for yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom comes. And he took the bread and he gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Thank you, Jesus. And likewise, he also took the cup. He took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant 
in my blood, which is shed for you. And that's Luke 22, 14 and 20, if you want to read that. All right. And you can do this at home. You should be doing communion. You should be doing communion at home and teaching your children. If you have children or if you just you do communion. All right. This is my cup, the new covenant, which my blood was shed for you. Hallelujah. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died up on the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Hallelujah. Thank y'all for being here. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, thank you for the word that went forth here on today, Lord. Thank you for your spirit, your fire, your deuteronomous power, your atomic power that rested on this conversation, Heavenly Father. I pray that the enemy is not able to steal this word, Lord. They're able to steal this word away from those who, who hide it in their heart. May it be hidden in their heart, Heavenly Father. If I said anything in error, Heavenly Father, rebuke me, correct me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that I haven't offended anyone, Lord. But if I have, Lord, as long as I don't offend you, Lord, I'm okay with that, Lord. So I pray, Lord, that uh, people know that this message was said in love. And sometimes a rebuke is needed. A uh, correction is needed to bring us back into right standing and to right alignment, Lord. Because, Lord, you said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, if we seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, then you'll come down, you'll hear, and you'll come down and heal our land, Heavenly Father. So, Lord, we stand together for those who are in agreement, Lord. We stand together on one accord, Lord, and we worship you and we thank you for this day, for this beautiful Shabbat, Heavenly Father. We thank you for your shalom, your peace resting upon this conversation, Lord. We thank you for keeping the airways clear, Heavenly Father, of demonic influence, Heavenly Father. And for those who are here, Lord, we pray a special blessing over them, Heavenly Father. We pray your hedge of protection be around them, Lord, that you protect their, their ear gates, their eye gates, their homes, their possessions, Heavenly Father. And and that uh, restoration be upon their head, Heavenly Father, that love and kindness and the fruits of the Spirit are loosed upon to them, Lord, that healing and deliverance go forth, Heavenly Father, that every demonic soul tie, every demonic covenant, every demonic altar be torn down by the resurrected blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Heavenly Father, that you heal the sick, Lord, and raise the dead, Heavenly Father, those who are spiritually dead, Lord, may they hear this word and it hearken something in their spirit, may they hear this word and it touch them and it light a fire fire upon them, Lord. We speak Holy Spirit boldness over them, Lord, to teach and preach the gospel, Lord, for them to evangelize the, uh, those, Lord, who need to be uh, hear the gospel, Lord, so that the gospel is preached in all the four corners of this world, Lord. We know that you are bringing back your scattered people, Heavenly Father. You are bringing back, you are calling your remnant back to you, Heavenly Father. So we stand in the gap and we intercede for this nation, Lord. We intercede for this world and our communities, Lord, and we take dominion, Lord, you gave, you put us here, Lord, to take dominion, to take back territory, Lord, enlarge their territory, Lord, enlarge their coast, Lord, enlarge their, their increase their influence, Heavenly Father. We're not influencers for influence's sake, Lord, but we want to be influencers for the kingdom, Lord. Matter of fact, we're not even influencers, Lord. We're disciples, Lord. We're disciples, Lord, for the kingdom of heaven, Heavenly Father. So let our uh, our testimony not be ill spoken of, Lord. We bind up Satan, uh, uh, not Satan. Lord, we bind up those demonic powers, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, and Satan, the Lord rebukes you. Lord, we uh, ask that you release your warrior angels and those to fight against Satan and those principalities, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We bind up every spirit of Jezebel, Absalom, uh, uh, Saul, Heavenly Father, every demonic spirit, every witchcraft arrow, Heavenly Father, that is being levied against us, Lord. Lord, we pray, Lord, that the gates of hell shall not prevail, Lord, and you've given us the power to overcome evil evil, Lord. So we just thank you, Lord. You said no evil has come up, will overtake us, Lord. We will not be, be tempted beyond what we have uh, the power to say no to, but what we have the power to come to, to fight against, Lord. So we know if we're being tempted, it's not of you, Lord, but you've given us the power to overcome temptation. You've given us the power to overcome masturbation. You've given us the power to overcome fornication, Lord. You've given us the power to be transformed in your image, Lord. So those who think they are 
are transgender, Lord. Let them know that transformation is in the house. Hallelujah. Transformation is in the blood of Jesus. Lord, as long as they come out of agreement with it, you can work, Lord, because you won't go against our free will, Lord. But may this message touch somebody's ears, Lord. May it touch their hearts, Lord. They may have built their whole lifestyle around their trauma. They may have built their whole lifestyle around pride and, and the alphabet community, Lord. But you want to bring them into a new community. Somebody may, may have spent their whole life being uh, on OnlyFans or, or Hordom or, or any of that, Heavenly Father. You want to bring them into the kingdom. Hallelujah. You want to crown. God wants to crown you, sister. God is not mad at you. He's not mad at you, brother. He wants to bring you into his kingdom. He wants to bring you into his fivefold ministry. He wants you to get on post because he has work for you. Hallelujah. See, the things that the enemy tried to throw at you when you were younger, when you were older, hallelujah, God wants to transform you. God wants to make you over in his image. Lord, make me over, make me over, make me over. Renew us, Lord. Renew our minds, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus every spirit that has uh, every demonic tongue every tongue that rises up against us in judgment shall be condemned heavenly father when we're on post for you lord and people come against us they're not coming against us they're coming against my god so be careful when you put your mouth on a woman or man of god be careful who you put your mouth on when you don't understand something be careful when you put your mouth on somebody and they're preaching and teaching the unfiltered gospel of god god won't deal with me he'll deal with you hallelujah so lord keep us in right standing with you keep us in alignment with you lord let us follow you season by season day by day hour by hour lord and for those who are broken hearted lord they figured out lord that the person that they are dealing with lord is not who they say they are lord you said you love the broken hearted and you bind up their wounds lord bring them into your plan lord that this was not god's best for you this woman or man was not god's best for you it's what you chose but it's not god's best for you god has better for you god has greater for you god has a kingdom spouse for you hallelujah for those who are to be married god has a kingdom spouse for you hallelujah so god reveal reveal who that is lord for those who are ready lord make them wives and husbands lord because righteousness is still right hallelujah you love marriages lord we see how this world has come against the institution of marriage lord when lord what you put together let no man put asunder heavenly father in the name of jesus so we intercede and we pray for godly marriages heavenly father thank you for those of us who are married to kingdom spouses lord we thank you for the gift of friendship and partnership and love lord and true love and agape love lord that is only found when you when you ordain a couple when you ordain a partnership heavenly father and those who are searching lord let them no longer fall for the counterfeit heavenly father no longer will they fall for the familiar spirit clothed in flesh clothed in what they like lord but underneath is demonic covenants and spirits and all kind of foolishness and debauchery hallelujah no longer will we fall for that because of our fleshly desires lord so we submit our flesh and our carnality to you heavenly father and we come under your direction heavenly father so we bind up every demonic soul tie lord we repent and renounce every agreement made lord whether it's families lord some of us have been called like abraham to come out from amongst them to come out to leave our kinsmen heavenly father lord help them to do what you have called them to do heavenly father and for those who are called to stay give them the tools to be able to deal with that family to be able to to deal with the Jezebel, to be able to deal with the Ahabs, to be able to deal with the Absaloms, to be able to deal with the Abaddon, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your love and your great and your graciousness and your mercy, Heavenly Father. We know that time is drawing near, Lord, that the fire of God, the wrath of God, the judgment of God is coming, Lord. And when it comes, Lord, if we're not on the right side, we can be consumed by the fire. But, Lord, you don't want that fire to consume us unless it's cleansing us lord so lord help us to be in alignment with you lord hide us lord in the cleft of your rock in the cleft of your wings heavenly father in the shadow of the most high let us dwell there lord where no witchcraft where no sorcery where no divination where no curse can touch us heavenly father when we stand in righteousness lord so lord we just thank you lord we ask for your hedge of protection around everybody here lord around everybody who will watch the replay lord that you bless them lord for those who are just coming into the awareness of 
what they are dealing with, Lord. We ask for divine strategies, Lord. We know it's not easy to break free from a Pharaoh. We know it's not easy to leave Egypt, Heavenly Father. We know it's not easy, Lord, when we come to the realization of what we've been dealing with, Lord. But give us divine strategy, and Lord, we ask for obedience, Lord. Hallelujah, that we walk in obedience so that we can come into the plans and the purposes of you. Some things will not be revealed when you're walking with a demon carrier. When you're walking with a demon carrier, you're supposed to be a glory carrier. Some of your gifts and talents will not be revealed. Some of you are wondering what your purpose is, what the plans God has for you is. God is not going to reveal them to you while you're walking in covenant with a demon carrier. You got to come out of it. Hallelujah. So some people, God is calling you out of this. God is calling. He wants to set you free. No longer will you have to depend. Some of you haven't worked. You feel like you don't have gifts and talents, just like who was it? Uh, was it Elisha told the woman with the oil, get the oil, get the oil, get the oil. You have oil inside of you. You have gifts and talents inside of you, brother. You have gifts and, and talents inside of you, sister. Yes, you do. And God says, your, your gifts will make room for you. If you follow and obey him, you won't have to sit up under a Jezebel for sustenance. You won't have to be sitting up under uh, as an Ahab and people pleasing uh, to get love and to get sustenance and to get bread and to get a house and to get certain things hallelujah you won't have to pimp yourself out you won't have to pimp your children out you won't have to make your children small sacrifices to your demonic god when you make the most high your god hallelujah false gods you will have to continue to make small sacrifices you will have to continue to pay homage to your false gods god wants to bring you out of that god wants to bring you out because god where god provides he provides sustenance where God provides, he gives provision. Hallelujah. Where God uh, sends you, he'll give you manna day by day. So come from under that Jezebel. God wants to be your God and your only God. He doesn't want you dealing with false gods. He wants to be your only God. So Lord, we thank you, Lord. We honor you, Lord, and we praise you. All glory goes to you. All glory to the most high, Lord, for saving our soul. Hallelujah. Thank you for this message and those that chose to stay to the end in prayer. Some people see the prayer and they walk away. Thank you for those who stay, Lord, because you told us to pray without ceasing, Lord. You're building up a prayer, a prayer, a community of prayer warriors, Heavenly Father. You're showing them how to intercede, Lord. You're showing them how to travail and prevail and not just walk away when the prayer is being said. Hallelujah. Not just click off when the prayer is being said. Don't you know prayer is a weapon? Don't you know prayer is powerful? Hallelujah. Some people minimize the, the prayer the prayers when they click off hallelujah but those thank you for those who stay lord who know that prayer is a weapon that righteousness is a weapon that salvation is a weapon hallelujah against the enemy heavenly father that truth is a weapon that the our feet are shod with the gospel of peace that the word is a weapon against our enemy lord you're showing them how to stand you're showing them you're discipling your children heavenly father so lord build us up lord make us whole clean Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Jehovah Sikhanu. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Jehovah Mekadeshkim. Consecrate our lives. Consecrate our spirit, Heavenly Father. In the mighty name of Yeshua Hamashiach, it is so. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would we be? Where would you be if God didn't save your soul? Where would you be if God didn't pull you out? Where would you be? Where would you be? Would you be in your right mind? Some of you would have been in a mental institution. Hallelujah. Some of you were on your way to a crazy home until God stopped by and picked you up. Some of you were on your way to live it in perversion before God picked you up out of that. Some of you were on your way and in bed with a demonic demon carrier before God came in and tapped you on your shoulder and told you to arise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And for those of you queens who want to join uh, the CBU program, please do. Sessions begins this Thursday, uh, 630. Thank you to our name. I will allocate those that money appropriately. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, it's, it's more of this. All right. If, if you were in CBU, 
and you want to join us, uh, please do. Okay. So God bless you all. Thank you, Danielle. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. May God continue to bless and use you mightily to bring his children up out of Egypt for his glory. Much love, sister. God bless you, Danielle. God bless you. May God return that to you over and above measure. Yes, indeed. Hello, Miss Pri and Lolly. Yes, indeed. Okay. So CBU is all about sisterhood, spiritual warfare, discipleship. We're going to be talking about business. We're going to be talking about um ministry we're going to be talking about uh you know soul ties and and it's a whole program all right so if you uh joined already check your uh your information your the handbook uh, we legit over here all right check read the handbook all right read the handbook uh your welcome letter and all of that okay and thank you for joining the program i really appreciate you we are going higher um if you want coaching my my time and everything is going to be geared towards the women in the um in the program okay um I, god has given me instructions to protect the oil prepare the oil and preserve the oil so i have to be careful um uh to, to stay in alignment and lockstep with him okay i can't get pulled 20,000 uh directions i have to go where god is leading me and this is the seat this is the season and and the program that he has me in so that is where i will go where god tells me to go and do what he tells me to do so if, if you are reaching out to me for emergency services i'm not a, a 911 center i don't know if i ever gave you the impression that i was if i did that's how i got um uh um catfished all right and and the fbi and all things had to get involved because i was operating outside of my god given parameters and see my emotions and me wanting to help everybody and sponsor everybody the year of the sponsorship for me is over but last year was the year to get in and if you wanted a sponsorship and you wanted free 99 that was 2020 and 2021 and 2022 was your year this year no 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 so i have to protect the oil and his people uh god if it's god's will then it's his bill you got to go to god you can't make me your god all right. So I have to go where God what, and do what God uh, is telling me to do. If you want to be in there, God will provide a way for you to be in there. OK. And those and we're we're almost full. OK, we, we almost full. All right. I will tell you that. So if you want to get in there, get in there. All right. God bless you all. I will see you uh, next Saturday. And for those who are on CBU, I will. Yes. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes. Put some flames in the chat. Thank you. Don't forget to um, we'll be on faith based workplace. Get your knuck if you butt T-shirts. Um, but we'll be over on, on his channel on on Wednesday. Well, I won't be in there, but uh, I'll be in the chat. All right. So join us there. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, let me see. Uh, Tiffany. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Thank you, sis, for being here. Thank y'all all. Okay, I will see y'all next time. God bless you. Thank you, Mel. God bless you. And don't forget to hit the like button. Share this out. Yes, Charlene, I'm ready. I'm ready. Share this out and bless somebody else. All right. Until next time, I will see you later. Um, have a good day. Have a good sh uh, Shabbat Shalom. And I will see you next time. All right. Bye-bye. Chain Pika University, CBU, Mentorship and Sisterhood Program, register today. CBU Mentorship is all about holistic healing and full recovery from narcissist abuse. Are you a believer who is searching for sisterhood in a safe space? Our bi-monthly accountability virtual video meetings are designed to help you elevate your personal, professional, and spiritual walk, and in your God-given calling. The meetings will be held via Zoom virtually. If you miss a session, don't worry, sessions are recorded and the links are sent on the CBU portal, a secure site, for playback. If you would like to read CBU reviews check them out on Google. The mentorship focus areas will be recovering from narcissist abuse and spiritual warfare, in addition to a focus on holistic healing, spiritual, severing soul ties, covenants and agreements, tearing down altars, fasting, prayer, discernment, warring against witchcraft in the family, workplace, and four-wall church, emotional, overcoming emotional distress and anxiety, dealing with stuck points and strongholds, overcoming guilt and shame, trauma recovery, 
Betrayal Trauma Dealing with heartbreak and betrayal of narcissistic family or relationships. Psychological Your attachment style Dealing with the soul realm Healing Yah's way Financial Getting finances back on track after abuse Physical Getting back to you and glowing up in Christ Discipleship Going deeper in my faith walk Goals Staying on track Protection and restraining orders Business development Gifts and the kingdom of heaven Business mentorship Starting a YouTube channel and ministry No contact, low contact, and grey rock Dealing with the guilt and shame of no contact Narcissistic relationships Narcissistic mothers Narcissistic fathers Narcissistic children Narcissistic work environment Day-to-day -day life after and during abuse Coping with life in general The mentorship program includes Bi-monthly live coaching groups Accountability check-in Business coaching Discipleship and stewardship Deliverance Education Exhortations Empowerment Apostolic and prophetic equipping Sisterhood Spiritual ICU recovery Spiritual warfare equipping Warrior training Workbook Worksheets Visit www.narkfreeliving.com to register today. Seats are limited. Use code MENTOR until the 1st of January 2023 for a discount. Payment plans are available. Check out the option for the 3-month plan for a discounted rate. Sessions begin in January 2023. Let's get ready to break those chains.